All right, everybody. So welcome to the session here. My name is Rodrigo, and we're going to be going over Matt Maley, Chief Market Strategist at the Stock Picks Inner Circle chat room. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, have seen him before, but basically uh, he's on Bloomberg, CNBC. He's all around. So, you know, he might be familiar with him, but we're going to be here live with Matt Maley. And some of you guys know him from the Stock Picks Inner Circle chat room. Right now, at this moment, uh, Matt is with the chat members because that is the schedule. It's Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 p.m., and they're basically trading throughout the whole day. In this case, we're doing the session here with you guys. So we're just waiting on Matt to pretty much um, get a little time off the, the chat room uh, right now in a minute or two. And he's going to be here with us so that we can chop down the markets. Um, the screen is scrambling. Yeah, that's. I think that's like the effect of the video, Robert. Um, I think that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but let me just pull up the chat room here so I can show you live what's happening in the chat room. Things are getting pretty hot in there. Okay, so um, let me just pull this up here. And I, I believe... Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken here, that I have the man of the hour, uh, like everybody knows him out there, Mr. Matt Maley, Chief Market Strategist. How are we doing, man? What's going on? Uh, Sorry, I got a late, got on a little late here. We just had some people who were talking in the chat room right up to the close there. So I wanted to make sure that I uh, uh, was there. And uh, um uh, so, yeah, so I, I, sorry, I'm a few minutes late, but uh, only three minutes. So, uh, um, but uh, yeah, the market really, uh, it uh, was an interesting day today because it was really looking like a, a boring day for a lot of the day in the middle of the day. And then when the uh, rally uh, started losing steam, um, we started to do some, we, we started doing a bunch of trades in the last hour or so, especially in the last uh, half hour. So it was, uh, um, you know, again, that's it's one of the things we try to do in the chat room. Uh, keep active. I mean, and keep and stay very nibble, especially in these markets. It's uh, a boring day can turn into a very active one very very quickly. And uh, today was one of those because we've had you know these rallies the last couple of days, and then we rallied this morning, and then it really sold off. Looked like a failed rally. So we went ahead and made some uh, some bearish bets, but it'll also hedge them with some smaller bullish bets. And uh, so if we get any kind of big move tomorrow, if it rallies nicely. We should be able to cover any of our losses in, in, on the bearish bets. Uh, and if the market sells off, uh, we'll way more than make up, uh, we'll make very nice profits and way more than make up for any losses we have on the bullish bets. Um, right. That's one of the things that's worked out really well for us. And I, I want to give a couple shout outs here because the people are pumped. You know, they love you here. Uh, Herb in the house, Ahmed, Garav, Robert, uh, Antonio, um, Jim, what's going on? So um, a lot of these guys are members from the chat room, but basically, Matt, there's been a lot of volatility in the markets. I mean, at this point, you are Mr. Volatility. Um, for those that are not familiar, Matt Maley is, ha has the record of the, um, of the uh, biggest trade percentage-wise in Benzinga. I think it was like 8,000 something percent. Uh, and before that, he had the record prior. So volatility is Matt's best friend. And most people shy away from it or they just, you know, they rather not, get in the markets. And I'll tell you that Matt, uh, he gets excited about it. And there's, there's a, there's a lot of teaching. There's a lot of education. It's a lot of trading too, but everybody can get the hang of it. Uh, and Matt has also a session on Tuesdays for about an hour, right? Just with the chat members. Yeah. Yeah. And frequently goes, I'm sorry. I just want to pull up because I, before we get too far, I want to uh, read something today that I wrote down I want to make sure pull out, pull out my notebook. So I apologize for that. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, um, uh, uh, yeah, we've. Th I, I mean, the volatility is what, what traders live for, and, and you know, we all want to have that that kind of a big, uh, you know, big bucket that, that has our long term investments uh, in it. But uh, you want to have that, you know, if you have the time, and and especially in today's market, I mean, this year especially, if you have the inclination and uh, and the willingness, uh, you can really profit from from uh, the volatility that's going on right now. And we have the tools. Um, those of you who've been on. Seeing my webinars in the past are tired of may probably tired of me saying that, but I'm telling you, it is so vitally important. We didn't have those tools for decades, I mean, ever. I mean, yeah, sure, the institutions had them, but we didn't. And in other words, to be able to buy options, and whether it be uh, puts or calls, I mean, sometimes, you know, I keep saying, geez, we're really taking advantage of this de decline in the market. And, and we've been making a lot of money, our portfolio is way up. Um, 
but it's not just it's not just because we're making money on the downside. Our strategy we've been making it on both sides. And again, we have these weekly options in the in the big uh, uh, big cap names and many of the mid cap names. Uh, we have uh, options that expire several times a week in the uh, index ETFs. Uh, like the uh, SPY, which is, of course, the S&P 500, the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ 100 ETF, and the IWM, which is the uh, Russell 2000 ETF. And those expire three times a week. So you don't have to go out several months if you want to make a short-term bet. In the old days, you I mean, you had to be so perfect with your timing because you had to, you know, geez, I'm gonna, I, I think the market's going gonna, gonna to go down. But, you know, we had the expiration last week. So great. I think the market's going to go down this week, or I think the market's going to rally this week. You had to go out three months to buy an S&P or a, a put or call or three months for an Apple put or call. And all that time value on that option is very, very expensive. Now, if you got it exactly right, uh, the timing would work perfectly. But but uh, uh, you just were paying way up. And that time compression could happen very quickly. So the, the point is when you, when you have all of these, uh, when you have a... Uh, um, you have a, a strong short-term opinion. Uh, it's it's a lot cheaper. I mean, you don't. I mean, you're paying you're paying a dollar. I mean, we frequently kind of tr try to focus. We go a little bit out of the money and, and pay pay a dollar for those for those options. So if you buy, you know, you know, you're not paying through the nose. If you have to go out six months, I'm sorry, three months, it's much 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 more expensive to make that bet. So if you're wrong, it can cost you a lot more money. Um, and, uh, and of course, we're always wrong sometimes, that, that, and that's okay, because uh, uh, I don't care if you're buying stocks, options, no matter what it is, uh, you're going you're gonna to be wrong sometimes. The best traders have, been, have always been that way. Uh, but our whole thing has been trying to, uh, uh, been able to take advantage of those things, not just through ETFs, but also inverse ETFs, so you can take the, the downside, and leveraged ETFs, which are very much trading things. I want to know, for everybody who hasn't been out there, if you buy an inverse ETF, that's fine. If you think the market's going down, you want to buy an, an, an inverse ETF. Uh, but if you buy, buy a leveraged ETF, whether it be upside or downside, it's a trading vehicle. Because if the market goes sideways, your ETF is going to go sideways, your index ETF is going to go sideways, your invest, inverse ETF is going to go sideways. But the leveraged bullish ETF, that's going to go down. And guess what? So is the bullish, as the bearish leveraged ETF. Leveraged ETFs go down, both calls and puts go down in a sideways market because they have all these options and futures that they have to buy to, to lever them up. Um, so, uh, uh, but we've been able to take advantage of those and uh, those tools just weren't available to us uh, in, in 2008, 2009 during the dot com bubble, but even the 2018 bear market uh, and, and, and to a certain degree that, you know, the pandemic uh, bear market. Uh, it was very, very difficult. Uh, now all these uh, options are much, much more liquid. And even with uh, the, uh, you, know, the, you know, a lot of, because of the bear market, uh, a, lot, a lot fewer individual traders are trading them, but there's still plenty. I mean, they trade millions of shares a day um, in, in, the, in the actual ETF. And therefore their options are very, very liquid and uh, it allows us to, 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 to make some of these great profits. Um, you know, as Rodrigo mentioned, we've had uh, um, some huge, let me share, let me see if I can share my screen here. Oops. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll stop others. Okay. Let's go ahead and continue. Great. Um, here we go. So what we're gonna, I just wanna pull up some things here. Uh, it's, uh, oops, no wonder. Okay. Let me get this here. Oh, wrong one. Sorry about that. Hold on one second. Oh, you know something? I don't think I pulled that up. Let me just go here. Only take me a second. I apologize, but I just want to tell you about what some of the things we do and some of the trades we made. We've been able to make um, even today, where we bought some uh, TTQ, uh, TQQQ calls uh, late yesterday, uh, and we made a very nice profit. Again, it was we didn't double our money. Um, at least I didn't. Some some people may have been able to actually double their money who held on to them a little bit longer than I did. Um, but uh, uh, you know, th this is something that's been worked very consistently. We definitely had. Um, some losing trades. Last week was a tough week for me. I lost. I lost some money. That's one of the biggest things that that we all, everybody wants should know. That if 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 you lose money in a trade, I lose money in a trade. I don't do any trading that you don't know about. Okay, so um, you know, and I tell you exactly the exact trade. They listen. I'm going to buy the uh, the XLE uh, puts XLE, which is the uh, uh, energy stock ETF. I'm going to buy the puts on that. Here's the exact put I'm going to buy. I give you the expiration date, uh, the, the strike price. And when I sell it, 
I tell you exactly what I'm selling. I don't, there's no delay. I don't buy it and then wait a half, you know, an hour or two days and get and try to get you into it so I can sell it at a higher price. You know it when I when I do it. Okay. And uh, and so as and, and of course I don't make any money by churning your account. Okay. You you you, you your broker might make money because we do when you pay it, unlike stocks, you do have to pay a small commission uh, to trade options. It's so much smaller than it used to be. It's unbelievable. But uh, they are not uh, commission free like the stock trades are. But again, they're 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 really not very expensive at all. And uh, but again, the, the the broker makes the money, not me. So if anybody, um, you know, I'm I'm not uh, I don't get you into trades just so I can um, you know, churn your account and make money for myself. I make nothing. The only way I make money is by right. trading work. So uh, that's and- kind of what we're trying to focus on. Before anything here, Matt, um, I think it's uh, we kind of have to let everybody know. So Matt, uh, Matt Maley has been in Wall Street for about 40 years. Uh, I mean, maybe you can let him know a little bit better, Matt, so that they for those that are not familiar here that haven't seen you or are not part of the inner circle chat room, um, your background a little bit on this. Sure. Sure. Yeah, we I mean, I started on Wall Street almost 40 years, It'll be 40 years. Uh, just I started the Monday after Thanksgiving in 1982. So I've been around a long time uh, and uh, worked uh for 25 years as a trader, you know I'm, I'm a strategist at Miller Tabak. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, the uh, at Miller Tabak, and uh, uh, but you know I've been doing that for uh, for about 15 years. But I spent the first uh, t- 25 years of my life, uh, my tra- my career as a trader, and I traded on the, the Solomon Brothers Training Desk. If you've ever read, if you want to read the probably one of the best, if not the best, uh, book on Wall Street from that time frame back in the uh, the old days of trading. And block trading and such. Uh, that was Solomon Rose. We were the biggest trading desk in the world and the most important. And uh, there were other firms that were bigger firms like Goldman and Morgan Stanley, but we were the king of trading. Uh, and uh, the uh, and I was there for 15 years. And I was talking to uh, the biggest institutional trading desk in the world, and, and whether it be Fidelity on the mutual fund side, BlackRock on the hedge funds. I mean, hedge funds, mutual funds, banks, insurance companies, etc. Talking to all those desks. So I really knew. Uh, learned what was really important. Uh, you know, those, those, you know, the analysts would come in and say, hey, this is theoretically where a stock should trade. Uh, it should go up, it's, it's too expensive, it should come down. I had, I mean, as a trader, you had to be, I don't care what it should do three years from now. I need to know what it's going to do now in the next few days, the next few weeks. And that's really where, where uh, I differ from, from being a strategist from most of the other strategists on Wall Street. Most of them haven't, wouldn't know how to trade a stock, uh, trade real stocks. I mean, they can go put an order to buy you know, a couple of shares of Apple, but to really trade stocks. And, and then I, after that 15 years on Solomon Brothers, I spent 10 years at Merrill Lynch doing the same thing. And uh, the, you know, I managed the, it, 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 Solomon Brothers, I managed the, uh, the, the desk here in the, the Boston area. So again, you see some of the biggest mutual funds, the most important trading desks in the world. I also talked to the, uh, uh, JP Morgan Asset Management in New York. So uh, really not just, not just here in Boston, but uh, down in, in, uh, in New York as well. Um, but, in, in, and for that matter, in, in investors have covered people in Japan, et cetera. Um, but the point is that uh, it, it's it just, these guys come out and they just tell you what things theoretically can happen. That's fine. Uh, but the one thing about the stock market and the worst old saying on Wall Street is that the, the market is always right. <clears throat> That's ridiculous. The, the market is only always right eventually. Uh, and uh, so, that, I mean, that's how we make money. That's how traders make money. And you know something? That's how Warren Buffett made money in long-term bets. Because we, when the market got it wrong, when the baby's been thrown out with the bathwater, that's what Warren Buffett did. He came in and bought his, and has bought all these companies, uh, big chunks of, of, of companies, uh, at huge discounts uh, to their fair value. Because everybody, you know, when there was blood in the streets, he came in. When the market was wrong, he came in and took advantage of it. We do that all the time on a, on a much shorter term basis. Um, although, and that's the whole point of this exercise. One of the reasons you know, I started doing this, I saw the bear market coming uh, and I really wanted to get in and help, and help uh, individual traders um, uh, benefit from this that they haven't been able to do in the past because I saw that we had the tools to do it. And the thing is, because this bear market is gonna end at some point, I think it's got way longer to go. I mean, wh- quite a few months, if not even a full year to go. Um, but when that when the time comes, when that bottom, when the baby has been thrown out with the bathwater, when the bottom has finally come, when everybody's saying, I'm not going to touch a stock for the rest of my life, we're going to have number one, the money, number two, the confidence to go ahead and step to the plate and start doing what Warren Buffett did. Warren Buffett has spent some money. He's still got, I mean, it's no longer a record, but it's above 
his highest point before because he still knows that the market has a long way to go to come down. Um, anyway, so that's you know what we're trying to do and, and what we've been been able to do on a very successful basis. I mentioned the uh, um, the TQQQ puts. I'm sorry, calls that we bought uh, late yesterday. Those were um, TQQQ. That's the uh, three times leveraged uh, ETF for the QQQ. In other words, the Nasdaq 100. So if the Nasdaq goes up five percent, the TQQQ is going to go up fifteen percent. Now, so what we did, uh, we came in uh, on uh, last week and we were able to uh, make that trade. Uh, I'm sorry, yesterday, and we we're able to make that trade. It was actually a hedge against uh, some S some bearish uh, things we had, and uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, you know what we, what we actually did late in the day today, because we're now leaning uh, more much more to the bearish side, and uh, but we do have some bullish uh, positions in there, and that enables us to make a bet lose very little money if we're wrong and make a lot of money if we're right. That, that, that's, and that's the whole idea. And when you have this kind of volatility, if the market's trading sideways for a long period of time, it's not good for, for options traders. Uh, then when I'm trading, then I get more trading in the, in the ETFs or the uh, leveraged ETFs rather than the options because it just doesn't, uh, it just doesn't work as well. Um, so we want to always stay nimble. But right now, I think that this, the volatility is going to remain at least for the rest of this year, and I think long after that. But just to give you some ideas, and I say we talk about what we've been able to do it consistently. Uh, last week, uh, you know, I've just mentioned what we did with the uh, the TQQQ puts. Now, last week uh, we had some uh, oops, so we had some tough uh, uh, had some tough trades. I, I was really betting uh, I was really betting that the market uh, uh, would bounce at midweek, and uh, needless to say, it didn't. We we're able to make some money back. Uh, because I saw what was going on and switched rather quickly. So we went in and we bought, um, excuse me, the, the XLE, which of course the XLE is the ETF on the uh, energy stocks. And, you know, it's funny because we had some people, even within the chat room saying, how in the world could you make a negative bet on energy stocks? And I said, you know, I've been bullish on energy and energy stocks since October of 2020. I was way before any of the other strategists on Wall Street. I mean, yeah, some of them came in four months later, but they missed half of the move, half of the move. Yeah, so by the end of 2021, they were all patting on themselves on the back saying, hey, we were up 50% this year in the energy stocks. And I was saying, actually, I was up uh, 100% on the XLE and 120% on the XOP. So I've been bullish on the energy stocks for that long, uh, for that period of time. However, I've gone, come in a couple of times and said, Hey, it's getting weight. The energy stocks, either the energy stocks or crude oil, one or the other is getting overbought. Let's back off and from the group and even make some neg negative bets. And that's what I said last week. And, and, and you know, it was kind of funny because the week before when I, I first put the trade on, and it didn't work out. We got out, well, took our loss, took a small loss and, and got out and then looked for another entry point. But the, and one person was sitting there going, how in the world could you possibly be looking for every, everybody loves it? And I said, that's, I said, that was the point. Everybody loves energy. Everybody's long the stock, uh, long these stocks. Everybody's long these ETFs. It, on a short-term basis, it can't go any higher. So anyway, uh, we came in last week. We bought these. Uh, these put you, know, you can see where we uh, uh, bought these things, um, and we hold on to them for a couple of days. And we, when when the, when the uh, situation, when the I'm sorry, when they rallied, okay, three days later, we sold half. It came in. We sold half for a gain of 560 percent. Okay, and just one, two, three days. I saw it. now, of course, I wish I sold all of them because I sold the other half at the very end of the day with a 470% gain. Now, if you're going to get mad about you know selling half of it at four six, okay, because your average price was right there at about you know 520%. If that's going to drive you nuts, do not trade. You're going to you're going you're going to drive yourself nuts because you will very. I didn't even get the exact top there. I certainly didn't get the exact bottom. If I got the exact bottom, I would have bought them earlier in the day. But you can't be greedy on that stuff. It's like, hey, we made look at you made 500. Pat yourself on the back. 500 percent in four days. Are you kidding? How, you know you can't do that in meme stocks, okay? And that's the other thing too. Everybody's always looking for. Oh, I gotta I gotta find the next you know stock that's trading for 30 cents, and then I can make 10 times my money. Well, you know something? If you're trading in the options market in the volatile time frame, you can make that. Well, once in a while you can even make 10 times your money, but you can make these kind of uh, uh, big returns. Uh, in a very short time frame. Whoops. Here's the same kind of trade that we put on, uh, uh, the, the, basically at the same time, or a very similar time. Again, the SQQQ calls. And uh, this was actually a negative bet uh, because the SQQQQ is a, the inverse ETF, the 
three times leveraged ETF, inverse ETF on the QQQ. So again, when I, whenever we do a trade, I give the exact trade. Here's the stock I'm buying, the SQQQ, the expiration date, okay, June 17th, the uh, strike price, $61, and whether it was a put or a call. In this case, it was a call. So sure enough, we bought them at the end of the day uh, on, um, uh, on the 10th, I'm sorry, on the 10th, and then held on to them, okay, the next, uh, I'm sorry, on the, yeah, the 10th, 11th, 12th. So the, the next, we came back in, and look, we sold them. Uh, this is the beginning of last week. Again, I came in and sold half with a 200% gain. And late at the very end of the day, it dipped down. I was getting a little nervous. Like, oh no, I got I did it again. But no, it was able to come out. If you'd held on to all of them, you may have made 270% on all of them. Well, yeah, we also would have been up less than 100, about 100% here. And I've been going, kicking myself for not selling some. So again, we're not trying to, we didn't get the exact bottom. We didn't get the exact top. We even came very close here. Um, but that's what we're trying to do. I'm just trying to show, whoops show you that again this is another one uh from uh that same time frame where we buy the qqqq i'm sorry the, the triple q puts okay again the june 13th okay okay these okay expired on a monday okay i knew that the market uh was was rallying too much at the end of that week so i said hey let's look at these we came in the market opened nicely i was going to hold on to them very long 577 percent we bought them on friday just before four o'clock before the close and we sold them not long after the opening the next day. It's like, yep, look at all that I missed. We could have made more. But when you have a 570% gain in one trading day, it was actually four days because it was, because well, three days because we had Saturday and Sunday, but you can't trade them on those days. I mean, you in one in, 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 basically in, in trading hours, it wasn't even a full hour. I mean, maybe an hour and 10, 15 minutes. You make 500% and I'm getting out. I'm not going to wait around because this thing could fall, roll right back over. Uh, we would have made a little bit more. Again, got almost the exact bottom, missed the top. Uh, you know, if, 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 again, if you want to criticize me for that, uh, go ahead. I'll, I'll take the criticism and and and, and bank the, the trades. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. Again, here's another one. Um, same type of thing. Again, it was the uh, this was the the same week. Um, the, the, the week before, okay, we bought these on the 9th, okay, Friday the 9th at the very end of the day. I wish I had bought them uh, at the, uh, at, you know, at two o'clock. I didn't. We waited, but I didn't wait till that close. And sure enough, when the market opened the next, on, on, uh, on the next day with a, with a big decline, and uh, we made 400% on our, on our call options there. Advanced micro devices, okay, here's another one. I'm just trying to show here, this was earlier in the month, okay, in June 3rd. Okay, we trade these in the first and second, but the, the June 3rd is the expiration date. We traded them, as you can see down here, June 1st and June 2nd. But again, we bought the call options. The stock looked real good. We bought them on the first. The next day we sold them. Uh, we didn't get the exact high, but we got them for 146%. I mean, that's, you know, you know that's more, obviously more than twice your money, almost, you know, uh, 150%. <laughs> so, uh, but we've been doing this for a month. Okay, hold on. Amazon, here's another one where we bought. Okay, this is not, I can like that. This is one trade that I did not do. This was something other people in the um, in the chat room did. And where they came in at the end of May, it was the, the, the strike price was the June 3rd calls, but they actually came in the last couple of days of May. And again, it bought some uh, on, on the 27th, sold them on the following Monday with a 540% gain and as much as 1500%. Uh, the next day. So it's not just I me. Mean, I would, I, you know, and they say, well, how the hell? You know, it's like you're bragging about things that you didn't make. Well, this is the, what it is. We have a community here. We have a team here. It's a team, great team concept. Concept, and it's not. There was another trade we did in, in uh, was it Shopify or, or Snap? I can't remember which. Where same thing happened. People made over two thousand uh, percent on a trade, uh, and that I did not was not involved in at all. And uh, uh, I, they did ask me about it. I said, hey, that looks like a good trade. I'm not going to do it right now. Of course, I was ki kicking myself for not doing it. So in other words, I didn't tell them not to do it. The same thing, you know, I, I said it was a good idea, but I wasn't smart enough to join them uh, in, in the bandwagon, uh, jump on the bandwagon with them. Um, what we were just talking about, just to review too, this goes back to last year. I go, well, well, where do you get these ideas? I mean, what's one of the things we really try to concentrate on in the chat room is, is you know, not just what, what we're doing, but why are we doing it? And, you know, something getting way over, overbought. We use, we combine fundamentals, we combine them, sorry, we use fundamentals. Those are obviously always important, macro and micro. Then you got to look at uh, tentacles, you look at sentiment, you look at positioning, et cetera. These can be very helpful. This is what happened. This was actually a trade I did in the tier three. It was before the chat room was born. 
but we came in with Viacom and I was just like, this stock, look how overbought it is. This is a weekly RSI chart, relative strength index. When it gets up here above to 70, it's, it's overbought. Uh, and that's why it's a red line, it means stop, don't buy anymore. Uh, you get down to here, it, gets, it turns green and that's go ahead, buy, it's, it's getting oversold. Well, look how overbought it got here, okay? It, it, it got here above, just above 70. Each time the stock went down, went down there, went down there, went down there, went down there. <laughs> Look how overbought it was. I said, okay, this is ridiculous. We're gonna go in, we're gonna buy some call, some puts in Viacom. The stock dropped the next day 60%. We made over 5,000% on, uh, on, our, on our put options. I actually sold some at 2,500, sold some at 5,000. A percent, twenty five hundred percent gain, and then five thousand percent gain. Some people held on and made even as much as ten thousand percent. Um, whoops, let me just see here. Okay. okay, and these are just more. Again, more examples. We did the same thing. Here's some call options in the TQQQ. One hundred and seventy four percent in May. Uh, there's another one uh, uh, and a different one uh, that we made uh, on another call option. One hundred and four percent. And we've been, so we've been doing it, another SQQ, back in Apple computer here, okay, May 13th. So again, we've, we've made it, this is not just one or two trades we've, we've done. We've done them several times in May. I showed you one from basically every week so far in the month of June. And this one was an Apple call. It had just become ridiculously oversold. It was being sold off because people were using, uh, they're trying to meet margin calls uh, to, uh, in their Bitcoin. And other cryptocurrencies. Right. So said, what can I sell? They, well, I don't. I can't sell enough Bitcoin to meet my margin call. They sold Apple down. I said, "This is ridiculous. It's got to bounce back." We bought them here at the end of one day. The next day, we had them up four hundred percent. So this is a consistent thing we've been doing almost every week. I can't say it's every single solitary week, but it has been that way uh, for the last couple of weeks. We don't win on every single one of them. We lose some, but boy, when you get the gains like we've been getting on, on a lot of these trades, uh, it really, it really pays off really well. Right. Yeah. And I mean, uh, not, not obviously, you know, like Matt said, right, you know, these are all trades that, you know, throughout the week happen. But uh, I'm getting a lot of questions here about the chat room, Matt. So I'm just going to go over a, a couple of questions here before we can carry on the lesson and we can get we can take a deeper dive here into a couple of things. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Cool stuff, Matt. So. Um, all right, folks. So these are some questions that you guys have emailed me, by the way. So. Um, so does uh, does Matt mainly go over uh, member trade ideas uh, setups? Yeah, there's it's a two way street communication. You you talk in the chat room. It's a it's a community there. You talk with Matt back and forth. Are the sessions on on Tuesdays recorded? Yes, they are recorded. The chat member sessions eleven thirty a.m. Eastern, and uh, it can go for about an hour or more around there. Does everybody that joined get a free laptop? Yes. Chat room schedule that's Monday to Friday nine to five p.m. and uh, Money back guarantee, seven day, seven day money back guarantee. And the price at renewal next year is going to be the same as today. It's 70% off till midnight. So good questions. But um, all right. So let, let, let me ask, uh, let, let's just get into a topic here quickly, Matt. I don't know if you can pull up your Bloomberg uh, chart there, but um, something interesting happened with uh, Revlon, uh, the company where, and, and look, I think even Carl I can try to do something here in 2020. Um, when for this company to try to save it, but it looks like it's in the same position now. Um, and uh, from what I read in a news report on Reuters and Bloomberg and a couple other places, um, uh, there's a company uh, called Reliance Industries. It's from India. And the CEO, Mukesh Ambani, founder and chairman, it's the eighth richest person in the world today. He's got $93 billion. Um, so this guy apparently wants to snatch up Revlon from what the reports are saying, uh, that company Reliance, it's in India, you know, they got a big population, but uh, I mean, I think they can't comment on anything like that per Indian law. I'm not sure, but what, what do you think about this kind of stuff happening in the markets right now? And, and what could happen? What are the possibilities here with your experience? Well, I mean, you know, this thing, I mean, obviously there's a huge amount of risk and huge amount of speculation in this one because the base, they've declared bankruptcy. I mean, the stock, let's face it, the stock was trading right here, boom, at 60, well, I thought it got down to 60 cents, but a dollar, a dollar 18, I guess is as low as it got, because they, they're, they're declaring bankruptcy. And this guy comes in from uh, India and said, let me get rid of some of these uh, lines here, because there's just so much, it just looks so busy on this chart. Hold on a second. Um, so, uh, you know, so this guy comes in and he's talking about 
making a bid for the company, you know, even though they're basically a bankrupt. Uh, and, uh, and you can see what the stock has done. We've seen this huge run and it's okay to play this game. However, it's like, it's just massive, massive, massive amounts of risk. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful on anything you do here. But at the same time, it's what we do every once in a while, especially on the day before an expiration, uh, is what we do, we, we do call lottery tickets. And these are the ones where you go in and you buy something uh, where you don't mind if you lose a lot of money. In fact, you don't mind if you lose all of it. And uh, uh, that may sound crazy, but, but you think it's like, well, well if you, you, know, you, you only want to spend as much uh, as you can. Um, I'm sorry, as much as is, is that, well, you, know, you don't really care. Let's say maybe just uh, $300 and maybe it's just $30. Maybe it's $500. Maybe it's uh, $10. I don't know. But look at this thing as uh, you can't see it right there, but it's up 560%, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, if you, if you go play in these things, you can only imagine if a stock's up 500%, how much are, are its options up? I mean, this option, okay, uh, let's see here. The $1, so you're paying $2 options, five, you're probably paying five. I mean, let me see if I can do it here, hold on. Uh, intraday price chart, perfect, okay, here we go. And that's 622. Okay, now let's go three. Look at this thing up, okay? If you bought these the other day, you're up 1300%, 1300%. And that was, and it closed near its lows of the day. Okay, so the, so you say, well, geez, if I only put in a small amount of money, but you make 1300%, boy, I mean, uh, you know, suddenly that's, that's real money. And then you can take that and make, you know, something that's a little bit, you know, not so much. But then you say, okay, well, now I've got several thousand dollars. I'm not just going to throw this into some lottery ticket. Uh, so the, I guess my point is this news has been pretty much disseminated to the upside. Now people ought to be looking at the puts. Maybe they can buy the puts. But again, because it's such a, uh, such a, di uh, a risky situation, um, you don't want to spend, you don't want to spend the farm. You, you don't want to you know, bet the farm on it. Bet what you can lose or it's like, geez, I, I may sell it before it expires worthless, but at least I, I got to be willing. I say, I, I'm, I'm going to lose. I'm going to, I can feel very comfortable uh, losing 50%. If you're in there spending $50,000, I mean, you know, you know, you know, God bless you. $50,000 doesn't mean anything to you, but to be honest with you, I don't care how rich you are. $50,000 can go to a, a charity for, and so uh, you, you shouldn't be doing that on lottery tickets. That's not to say that people don't make a fifty thousand dollar bets, you know, uh, uh, that they really strongly believe it. But when you're just thinking, you're hoping that some takeover is going to happen or some takeover is going to fall apart. Uh, now you're just now you're just gambling. It's just a lottery ticket. It's a complete guess. Uh, so it's it's one that you can play. Uh, and the ones who did in the last couple of days have made huge huge money. Um, but again, just you just want to be a little careful about how you do it. You know, the options market. There's a lot of risks uh, involved. And like I said, every trade is not going to work. And uh, so you got to be careful on how much you put in. I, I work very hard to, I never put, I say never, but uh, uh, work for, very hard to avoid uh, putting more than 10% of my trading account uh, in, at risk at any one time. Um, you know, some people have said they, geez, they lost 50% or 30% in just a few days. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I, I just, I would never put that much at risk. That's just the way I do things. I can't tell people how to do it. Again, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm, 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 I'm just a trade, somebody giving trade ideas. Uh, and I, but again, but I do give when I buy them, when I sell them in a specific entry level, specific exit levels, uh, but people can trade around them. It's like some people get in before I, I say, hey, I'm really looking at this, uh, but I'm going to wait until this afternoon. And some people buy it immediately. Some people sell it before I do. Some people sell it after I do. Um, so, you know, again, I, I don't control the account. So people do it, what you, what you want. Everybody has dis, different risk uh, parameters. Uh, mine's a little bit higher than most people. So sometimes I hold on to my positions a little bit longer than, than others. Um, but uh, the whole point is that just be aware that this could be a really fun one to play, uh, but be careful about risking uh, too much money uh, on this name because, you know, uh, when a stock moves 600%, the stock, not the options, the stock moves 600%, uh, and, and, and just, you know, day or two, uh, you know, it's ridiculously volatile and you know, any play you make is going to be highly, highly, highly risky. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it, again, if, 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 if that's, it's fun when the markets are volatile, you can really, you can, you, you, you can have a few losses because there's you're getting such a small amount and then you get a big gain and suddenly, geez, I lost three times in a low row betting a hundred dollars. And then I made, you know, $2,000. Okay. That, that, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good, uh, you know, 
re return. Um, anyway, I just wanted to go back to this one thing that we were, uh, oh shoot, uh, let's see if we have it still. Oh, here we are, good. And we were talking about, I know Rodrigo alluded to it earlier. And again, we don't just talk about the stock markets. We are uh, frequently, this past week, we made a real nice uh, profit in the TBT, which is the, uh, uh, the inverse uh, 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 ETF for the bond market. Uh, I was, we were betting that the bond market would go down. This is, sorry, this was late last week. Um, in fact, I think I got the things there, but we made several hundred percent in that trade. Uh, I'll pull up the chart in a second. But we also do things, I'll go back to the bond market. Let's talk about the uh, FXI. This is the, this is the, the record that, that uh, Rodrigo alluded to. And again, we used, I used a couple of different uh, things, not just the fundamentals, but the tentacles and the sentiment and my experience. So first of all, I've been bearish on, on the uh, Chinese stock market all year in 2021. And again, this is the FXI China large cap stock ETF. And of course we know what happened. I mean, we had all this negative news every month. And the Chinese, Chinese government was going out and attacking uh, so, some industry in their business. It was just crushing their, their market. Uh, you know, start off with Alibaba, actually at the end of 2021, I'm sorry, end of 2020, then they went after, you know, the internet stocks. They went after, then, then they went after the educational stocks. Then they, they went after the ga gambling stocks. And then they went after the, the uh, uh, you know, gaming stocks. You know, in other words, the video gaming stocks. Uh, you know, one after another after another. The mortgage, obviously, the, the big issue with their uh, um, with their uh, their construction companies, etc. And then, so I was negative on this all the way down. Then, very late in, the, I'm sorry, early in this year, they came in and uh, the S and P, I'm sorry, the uh, SEC came in and said, "Hey, we are probably or are, are considering delisting a bunch of these uh, uh, Chinese stocks uh, in uh, in the U.S. So we're going to delist them." So the market just fell out a bit. So remember when I went back to this RSI chart, look at how oversold, it was oversold there, and the market bounced. Oversold there, market bounced. Oversold there, market bounced. Oversold there, market bounced. Look how incredibly oversold it became here. Most oversold reading on its RSI ever. This thing where it says last weekend's chart, obviously is a chart I made in March, so disregard that. But you can see how ridiculously oversold it got. We also looked at what we call Bollinger Bands charts. It told us it was way more than two standard deviations below its 20 day moving average. Um, and we can go over that a little bit more there. But anyway, and then using my experience, I knew, so I'm used to eat, so I, I saw the fundamentals and I went against the fundamentals. The fundamentals are still aren't that great, but I was like, doesn't matter. The, 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 it's ridiculously oversold. Everybody's short these names. So positioning's really bad. Uh, sentiment, everybody's really bear bearish on China. We gotta make the bullish play. Go ahead and buy. So we went in and we bought the FXI puts. I'm sorry, calls. Sure enough, uh, the next uh, within a, a day was actually I, I, this goes out two days, but it was basically the same of 27 percent. The Chinese stock market that would be the S&P or the Dow Jones rallying 27 percent one day. Well, we had bought the calls, and sure enough, we came in and we sold. We bought half. We, we, we bought. We were pretty aggressive on these. We both half sold half, almost 3,000 percent gain, 2,900 percent. And then at the end of the day, we sold the other half up 7,800%. The reason why I held on, usually, remember I said earlier, we had that one gain, it was 500% and it was right at the opening. I was going to hold on to that. I mean, it's like, I wasn't going to, I was going to be greedy. It's like 500%, let's go. Well, this time I knew, it's like just from my experience of 40 years, I knew that the Chinese government would come in and support their market. They always do. They do whatever it takes to support their market sometimes. This market was flat on their back. So I knew they would keep buying. But once it got up 3,000%, I said, okay, we can't be greedy. Let's take a profit on some of it. We held on to the rest of the day, 7,800. So there are people who said, who held on to the next day who made over 14,000%. Okay, needless to say, that's unbelievable uh, return. Um, so that's, again, this is not one we do every, you know, we get every single week. Um, uh, and, you know, we've had a couple of these this year, like I mentioned, the, uh, the Amazon trade uh, that people have made uh, earlier, uh, the, the people have made over a thousand percent, but uh, we've had many, many trades in the hundreds. And I, I'll just go over a few more here. You can see this again, this is going back to April. We see this in April, we were doing trades, uh, another April trade. There's one later in April and the QQQQ is over a hundred percent. Okay. The VIX calls 82%. Okay. And again, 200%, we could go on and on and on. Uh, but again, now we're starting in a May that we talked about earlier. But again, we did several trades in May. Uh, we do not do several trades a day that make hundreds of percent, but we've had quite a few every month. Uh, and, and that's really, you know, 
again, using my experience and using all of those things, not just to relying on fundamentals, using, uh, again, technical analysis is so important into trading. And I'll tell you one thing too, is that people don't realize how important technical analysis is because it is based on a fundamental analysis, okay? Right. And every single great trader, all those big hedge fund guys, uh, Paul Tudor Jones and, and uh, uh, Stanley Druckenmiller and Jeff Gunlock and uh, you know, all these guys, David T uh, Tepper, they all, all use technical analysis. Now, I'm not saying they use it 100% or even it's, I'm not saying it's the most important by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not saying it's the most important issue they use, but they all use it. And the reason is that it is fundamentally based. And, uh, and the reason I'll just to say very, very quickly, think about it. We always note that the stock market, you know, a stock moves six months before it's, it's, uh, uh, before it's uh, uh, underlying fundamentals in both directions. It rolls over six months in advance before things go down and it rallies six months in advance before things go up. Same thing with the broad market. I mean, we, the stock market's been going down for five, six months now, and now we're heading into a recession. But of course, we didn't wait for the recession. It started going down. And I said, well, why the heck does that? Well, that's, you know, that's, it's, it's more than a bunch of lines drawn on a chart. Whenever you have a situation where uh, a company, you know, they go from, uh, you know, several years of, 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 of uh, to, to say turmoil or whatever, where they've been, you know, their earnings have been down, they haven't been making much money, they have to lay off people and close factories. Well, all of a sudden things turn better. Well, their earnings are not going to turn up right away. They're going to, you know, they're, they're starting to get all sorts of orders and they're going to do better. Well, you know, the, the problem is it's going to take them a while to retrain those people, hire more people, retool the factories and get things up going. It's going to be six, nine, even 12 months before the earnings turn up. Uh, but the real professional money managers, the mutual funds, the hedge funds, they're not going to wait around for those earnings to turn. They have analysts telling them, hey, Mr. Portfolio Manager or Ms. Portfolio Manager, guess what? Uh, I've talked to all their suppliers. They're, they're giving them more, they're, they're giving them all sorts of supplies. So they're obviously revving things up. We've talked to their customers. They're saying they're buying their stuff, hand over fist. We're doing our, 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 our uh, due diligence on the, on the consumer. They're buying, they, they can't get enough of the product. This earnings are going to turn. It's going to take a little time, but don't wait for the earnings to turn. Buy it now. It is going up. And that's, but we don't have a hundred analysts working for us like they do on hundreds in some of those cases. Uh, so when, when that stock starts to move, we can see it in the stock, in the charts. And again, it's not just a bunch of funny lines drawn on a, on, on a, on a, on a chart. It's, it's, it's something that tells us what the, uh, the big money guys with all the, the deep pockets and analysts and stuff uh, are, are seeing before the rest of the world sees it. We're, we're able to see them and then react to it uh, earlier than we had been in the past. We might not get the exact bottom. Uh, and that's kind of what the uh, technicians do. They try to get the 70% in the middle. That's why I, you know, I th that we've been so good in the chat room here is that with my trading experience as such, we've been able to avoid uh, not just getting that 70% in the middle, but able to get a lot more of those moves. And, uh, and that's, as right. I mentioned earlier, worked out really well in the energy sector and continues to work for us on a regular basis. So uh, Jerry has a good question here. Um, so let's say if, if I am new and I'm trying to trade options, uh, how could I use this chat room to get full benefit if I am new and I need education, like, yeah. you know, with Couple the Tuesday things. sessions? A Couple of things. Number one, we want is, is uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Okay, so whenever you're asking questions, do everybody's had those questions. I mean, sometimes they're very simple answers and you feel like, oh my God, I can't believe I asked that question. But you know, so I don't care how smart you are. If you, you can be absolute genius. If you've never been exposed to it, how could you know it? It's, it's like you, you, you could be the greatest athlete who ever lived. Uh, but if you'd never heard of baseball and you come in and say, okay, what are the, what are the rules? I, it's going to take me a while to learn the rules, swing the bat. You know, uh, if it just, it's, you have to, it takes a little bit of time. So don't be afraid to ask questions. That's number one. Number two, uh, there are some great uh, uh, things that we've all shared. Uh, in the in the in the chat room uh, to really kind of get some of the basics. That's number two. Number three is that we like is that people like to do some paper trading first. In other words, paper trade is not a real trade. You say you just write it down on a piece of paper. <laughs> you say, hey, I'm going to buy the QQQQ May second, three hundred eighteen dollar puts, and then you write down the price that you didn't actually buy it. You just write it down. And a lot of these websites, I think TD Ameritrade and Fidelity, etc., will allow you to do fake trades in their computer. Just make sure you know that they're fake. Uh, and you say, hey, I just spent $5,000. It's not really $5,000, but, and then you track it. But, you know, again, paper trades, you can just literally, if you don't want to do it in your computer, you can just write it down by hand and say, okay, I bought it here. I sold it there. I made money there. And then finally, it's like, after doing that for a little bit of a while, a little bit of, 
time, then you actually do a trade, but you start really small. And again, we don't, I don't do, uh, uh, we, we'll do some straddles and some strangles every once in a while. And we can talk about what those are uh, later. But the, mostly what I do is just straight, you know, buy a put, buy a call. We're betting on a short term direction, uh, whether it be over a few hours or several days or even a couple of weeks, uh, looking for a move uh, in, in a stock uh, or an ETF. You know, in other words, ETF meaning a group or a, a broad market. And um, right, right. So, you know, you can ease your way into that. And I'll tell you one thing for darn sure is every great trader. So you're not a real trader until you've lost money in one of your trades. Okay. That, that I don't care who you are. You, you will lose money. That's okay. And that's why we try to help each other here to avoid making the big, the big losses. Um, and, you know, let get, get risk management and really, uh, 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 you know, get, keep the losses to a minimum and let the, and let the profits really run. Uh, the other thing though, too, is that what we do uh, again with this Tuesday uh, call, uh, we try to do some educational things and every trade I do, uh, I explain why I'm doing it. I mean, this, this is what's going on. You know, like I said, with that FXI, that Chinese stock trade, I said, you know, I'm doing this trade, even though the stock market, even though all the fundamentals look horrible, the technicals are just too strong. Just, and, and I know what the Chinese government's going to do. They're going to support their stock market. And sure enough, it worked out really well. But, you know, if I just said, you know, buy the FXI, it's like, uh, okay, well, uh, well, how much money? I mean, I, I didn't make it. I'm, okay, I'll put a little money here. But when you hear the explanation, maybe it's like, hmm, I don't know if I like that explanation. Eh, it sounds okay. I'll put a little bit of money in there. What do you say? What do you mean? It's the most oversold ever? And, the, and, you're, and you're sure the Chinese government's going to support it? Okay, I'm going to put a little bit, I'm going to make a little bit bigger bet. And uh, that's, you know, the, again, so you know what to do. It can, it can teach, because everybody's got a different risk tolerance. Everybody has a different amount of money. Uh, so, uh, you know, I can say, oh, buy $5,000 here or buy $500 right. there. You, you can get, a, get your own, own choices. But again, no stupid questions. We're very simple. We're not doing, you know, con, you know exotic condor trades. and, and Yeah, it's very simple. Okay, very so. straightforward. Um, for, so, uh, so basically, yeah, I mean, buying calls, buying puts, you're not doing anything, you're not doing anything complicated. So for new traders, this is great, especially because you have that session on Tuesday with Matt, but keep in mind, you're with him the whole day. Alan has a good question. Will we learn to find our, our, our trades on our own? Alan, basically Matt will give you all the trades, the entries, exits, um, pretty much like laid out. So, um, you'll just have to follow Matt's trades, right? What, and he will post them in the chat room so you can follow them very easily. So Blossom is asking, do you offer stock picks also? Uh, I mean, Matt, I mean, of course. I mean, Matt, I mean, you tell them everything you can do there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Sorry, but we, they're doing construction in my office here and there's like dust and stuff. So I keep rubbing my eyes. I apologize. But anyway, the, uh, I've been doing it for two days, um, but, but uh, they've been in here for a month. But anyway, the, uh, yeah, I, the, for, for my, you will get my ideas. Okay. And we have a separate page on the site. Uh, on the, in the chat room where it says, says Matt's important comments in there. I'll put every trade that I do so that you don't have to, I mean, because this, these, these, the chat room is just scrolling by all day long. And, you, and if you're off, you know, you, you go get your sandwich, you go take your, your, your work and you, and you go and do, do your work and you come back an hour later. Well, what has Matt done? I'll go to the more Matt's important uh, comments. There'll be, a, and, and again, I do not flood that. There are very small, most of them are the trades, and once in a while, I'll make an important comment. Hey, be careful, be aware that you know the Chinese just did this, or you know something like you know something like that. But for the most part, you can just kind of kind of go in and see what those trades are. Um, that's number one. Number two, though, there are other people who give, as I mentioned earlier, who give their ideas all, all day long, and they're and they're constantly asking me if you have. So yes, yes, I provide uh, these ideas, um, but if you have your own ideas and you want some uh, 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 some advice on it. Uh, or at least some, you know, my, one uh, more opinions on it. I will be more than happy to do it. And a lot of other people in the chat room will also be more more than happy to uh, uh, voice their opinion and say, "Hey, I really like the stock. You know, be careful. Uh, there's news out. Uh, you know, it looks like you know it's oversold. Looks like it wants to bounce. But there's also uh, uh, news out that they're you know they're gonna you know they, they just lost a big contract or something like that. Uh, so it looks like it probably has more downside. Um, so uh, my point is, all of the ideas are not my ideas. But all of mine are out there. You'll be able to see those. Other people's uh, are, are out there. And if you come up with your own idea, um, it's uh, be, be, feel free to ask. Same thing with individual stocks. Uh, you, there's one that's this natural gas, uh, BOIL, B-O-I-L. 
Uh, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm we're holding off getting into that thing, but I'm very bullish on natural gas on, a long, on an intermediate and long-term basis. Uh, so I think this pullback is going to create a great opportunity. Somebody asked me about that. Uh, must have been yesterday because it's a three day. It's only well, Monday when the market was closed. So, and uh, we're still holding off a little bit right now. We'll pull the trigger. But the point is, I wasn't the one. It wasn't my idea. Somebody else asked me about it. And it, well, well, I we've been talking about this particular stock for many months, but we hadn't really talked about it in a little while. And somebody came in and asked me about it. I said, "Hey, that's a good idea." Um, and so this was. I was talking more on the stock at the time than on any of the options. Um, but yes, uh, the the answer is. Uh, uh, we we I, I you you be feel free to come up with your own ideas, but ask me or anybody else in, in the chat room uh, what they think about it or what I think about it. Uh, but the, I guess if, if the one thing I just want to make sure too is that I don't come in and say, "Hey, I really like Apple here. You ought to take a look at it." I say, "You, I really like Apple here. You ought to buy." I and and therefore and and these are the reasons why I like it. And therefore, I am buying the July fifteenth. $200 call options, because I think, uh, you know, and so you get very specific. So not just, you know, hey, here's a really, you know, I really like Apple here. And you're, now you're on your own. Go figure out which one, the, the right the right way to play it, uh, you know. And you don't have to, you, some people like, sometimes I'll say, hey, I'm just going to play it out till next Friday. Some people decide to go up, they're going to go out two weeks or three weeks. Because again, I, 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 you know, Apple has a weekly options. You can go out a couple of weeks if, if you want to be, because it gives you a little bit more time, a little, a little less risk. Um, the return will be a little bit less, but that's okay. Uh, but the end, the options market can still do very, very well. So uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 my, my, my guess is that what part of the thing was that you're asking is, is do you just give out, you know, bullish, bearish, whatever? Um, and I, yes, to answer, but when I, when I come out, uh, I also give very specific ideas on which, which options uh, you should be looking at uh, when, uh, if and when uh, I do like something. Now there are, I do admit there are times I come out and say, Hey, you know, look at this. It's too early for me. Um, it, you know, I, I, you know, or somebody will ask me, uh, well, do you like this? And I say, Hey, yeah, I like, I think it's a, a good trade here. Or, you know, be honest with you. I know you like it, but I'm, I'm a little worried about it. Um, uh, so sometimes I do some general gen, generalities, but when it's my idea, you know, exactly what I'm, what the exact thing I'm looking at. Uh, and, uh, um, but, uh, then we need to so, yeah, so you provide some stocks, and option. If so if Absolutely. They you, so if they want to ask you about a stock, they can ask you there, right? Absolutely. It's kind of, kind of hard to hear you there, Rodrigo, but the, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, if you no have stocks any, and options. Yeah. Well, it's any stocks and we're getting more of that uh, recently. And that's going to be a bigger deal uh, if and when, well, when we will at some point uh, get, get a bottom. And, and then we're going to be really looking at, uh, because it's, it's a situation where I'll be saying, hey, this market's really getting oversold, it's washed out. We ought to be buying the Apple, let's say, let's say it happens in the fall, all these big crashes or big big flushes come out in the fall. And then maybe I'll say, hey, let's all go out and buy the Apple 200, no, no, November 15th, $200 calls. Okay, but we're also gonna buy the common stock as well. We're gonna do both. And that's when you get, because we, we wanna buy both, some for our long-term account and some for our short-term account. And, uh, and and in fact, we're going to put some of the stock in both accounts, and the options, of course, would be in a short-term account because uh, uh, options. Well, you, you can go out a long time for options. I I tend not to do that. It gets to be very expensive. But uh, um, but again, just uh, uh, but yes. So the the point is, we'll be doing a lot more uh, uh, straight out stocks uh, calls uh, uh, plays, I should say, uh, as this bear market plays out, and we start to get. Um, the market finally starts to get really uh, cheap. Now, before we move on, I just want to talk about, and I, I pulled these notes up earlier, and I hope it wasn't distracting because Rodrigo was talking and I was looking away from the camera. I didn't mean to be distracting, but this is something that the re one of the reasons that people in the chat room know I've been, uh, I've been quite bearish and, and uh, continue to be and, and think the market will go lower over time. And, uh, and I just, uh, we, I'll, I'll go over, let's say why, why, why I think that. Number one, the stock market got pushed to ridiculously high levels uh, and uh, by the Fed and uh, all the liquidity that they provided as, as long as, as well as the uh, Congress uh, with the monetary policy, I'm sorry, with the fiscal policy. And that's okay because we needed that. It absolutely needed that in 2020. The system was on the brink. I'm telling you right now, people don't realize just, we were on just as much of a brink uh, in 2000, uh, 
2020 as we were in 2008. The big difference is that being on the brink of 2009 is that all these uh, uh, companies were gonna fail. This was a situation where the market was just gonna shut down because the, the bond market just shut down. And so uh, they had to do something. They did the right thing. The problem, of course, is they kept the liquidity on for too long. That puts the valuations way ahead of the fun of uh, the stock markets, way ahead of the fundamentals. And so, as I was saying at the beginning of the year, we were always going to have a, a, a deep correction. I said 15 to 20 percent minimum, okay, because that's just to get the market to somewhere near fair value, okay. But I also said it's going to be worse than that because uh, the decline in the stock market is going to cause a recession, and uh, and that means that those value, the valuations to get down to fair value, it's going to have to drop even further. Um, and uh, uh, you know, I, I've been saying, I mean, I've been saying it all year. I mean, uh, there have been one or two other people on Wall Street who've been calling other people trying to claim that they, oh yeah, we were cautious. Yeah, a bunch of baloney. Uh, only, at least you know, there's a couple of guys who've been bullish all year and have been dead wrong. At least they're they're you know have enough guts to say, yeah, I've been wrong, rather than trying to claim that they. They were, they were, uh, but anyway, uh, but uh, there's no question. I was not, there was nothing vague about my call. I started in the fourth quarter. I was banging the table saying the Fed has changed their policy. This, there's nothing, don't fight the Fed, don't fight the Fed, right? Uh, and I said, the market's going down. I've been, I was saying that right from, right from the get go. But now we're starting to see, uh, so it's basically, I've been saying it's going to be a one two punch. The first punch has already been landed. We're not even down to cheap levels. I don't care what a lot of those people try to say on Bloomberg TV or CNBC saying uh, the market's fairly bad. It's ridiculous, okay? Um, but but they that's what they're paid to do. They're paid to be bullish. That's what, and that's why those, those um, no, almost no economists will tell you we're in a recession, and we're gonna have a recession until we're already in one because it's, 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 just, it's just like the unspoken rule on Wall Street. They won't admit it until we're already in the recession. Instead of saying it, what they say is, oh, we won't have a recession this year, or uh, uh, it's not my base case scenario, or uh, the, um, oh, the, the, the big one now, of course, is the odds of recession are rising. Come on, it's, it's just ridiculous. They, they, we're, we're, we're headed for a recession. Now, it brings me to the point uh, uh, of what Bill Dudley, Bill Dudley um, was the, uh, the New York Fed president uh, from 2009 to 2018, so nine years. Uh, the second most important, most second most powerful man, person in the uh, in the Fed is the New York Fed president, almost all the time. Very rarely, once in a while, the vice chair will be the second most important person. And right, actually, now I'm I'm, you know, I'm uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Brainerd is, uh, is is certainly right there. She she might even be the the second most powerful person. And I know uh, uh, there was uh, th there have been several in the past. But the, but, but my point is that even if the, even if the in the few times the vice chair has been really really powerful, uh, the New York Fed chair has been right there uh, with him or her. Okay, and so uh, uh, the, the main reason is that of course is New York is the is the uh, finance capital of the world, number one. And number two, the, the, the Federal Reserve is, the, I'm sorry, the New York Federal Reserve is the one that does the trading. They have the trading desk. None of the other, de de none of the other uh, regional banks do. Uh, it's, it's only the New York Fed. So they have, he has the most power. So here's a guy, um, Bill Dudley, and he's been warning all the way along. As soon as the Fed came out and, and, and said, we're gonna be more aggressive uh, in, with, with uh, cutting back on QE, we're going to be more aggressive raising rates. We're going to be more aggressive uh, raising our, I'm sorry, shrinking our balance sheet. He has been saying, he's been warning early. This is going to be hard for the markets. This is going to be hard for the economy. Nobody wanted to pay attention to him. And, and he's the, it's not like he was the New York Fed president 100 years ago. He was the last one. I mean, he was the one before the current one. Right? And you don't think he's talking, to the, he's not talking to the Fed, people the Fed all the time. I don't think he doesn't know Jerome Powell. I mean, come on. Uh, and, and so, I and mean, I actually think he, he he takes the time to purposely lay the groundwork for what's going to happen. Well, today he comes out and he writes a piece. He writes for Bloomberg on a regular basis, and they pay him. It's, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not like he's, he's they don't they don't skew him any way or other. He gives his, his opinions. It's not like he's doing a, a political commentary. He's trying to tell you what the market's going. And he and the, the headline said U.S. is headed for a hard landing. Okay, so this is his, this is not an interview. This is his sitting down, I'm gonna write a story. It's not like he got surprised and say, oh, what do you think? You know, it's like, I'm gonna, I'm purposely writing this story. And uh, he basically said, or he did, basically he did say, a recession is inevitable, 
inevitable in the next 12 to 18 months. The Fed is more focused on pushing inflation down than supporting economic activity. So in other words, he's basically saying the Fed is going to go ahead, push us into recession because it's the lesser of two evils. He basically said, um, uh, and, uh, you know, he just said it's, uh, that even though it will cause a recession, it will not, um, that if he, they did nothing and let inflation run, run rampant, that they will get a recession either way and it'll actually be a worse recession. So they're picking the less, lesser of two evils, okay? And uh, you know it's gonna you know it's going to reduce it's gonna take time to reduce demand uh, in, uh, enough to uh, reduce inflation, uh, and it just goes on and on. But you know the thing he finished with this is what he finished with. This is the former Fed of the year of President New York Fed. This is the last lines. Um, quote direct quote much like Wiley e. Coyote heading off a cliff, the U.S. economy has plenty of momentum but rapidly uh, disappearing support. Falling back to earth will not be a pleasant experience. Are you kidding me? And when a guy with his stature is telling you that, you know, Wiley e. Coyote, hello, boom. He's not calling for, uh, he's not calling for a soft landing, okay? Uh, and, 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 and in fact, he's like sounding for, you don't, you don't compare it to Wiley e. Coyote unless it's a, 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 re, a very hard landing. And the thing is that he has been spot on with his analysis uh, since last year, really since he, since he left the Fed uh, and since he's been providing this for, for Bloomberg. And uh, I just think those who are ignoring it are gonna be making a big mistake. So uh, I do think that the market's gonna see a lot more volatility. I do think, which is great for us who are doing this trading, there's gonna be more downside, but those as is shown every single bear market in history has sharp rallies. We wanna take advantage of it both ways. As we showed you, remember I showed you those, those, those uh, a TQQQ calls that we bought, those AMD advanced micro devices calls that we bought. We want to take advantage of it in both ways. Um, but the line of least resistance, I firmly believe, is lower because we're headed for a recession. And some people think we're already in it. Um, and I've been saying this from the get go. I've been saying this since the first quarter. I've been calling for a bear market since, or you know, a, a deep correction bear market since the end of last year, and and a recession since. And we got further to go. I'm sorry. It's just it's it's we have we, it's 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 the biggest thing that happened. We had this thing of inflation, and then the situation in Russia has made it all much worse. I don't want to be rambling too too much here. I mean, I've only been going for an hour, but I I, I mean, if, if I get going too much, I apologize. But just remember, okay, this is not your normal inflation. This is supply driven inflation. If you have normal inflation, it's fine, okay, because people demand, okay. Normal inflation is demand-driven inflation. So people have better jobs and uh, get better jobs. And the ones they do have, pay, they get better uh, raises and bonuses, okay? And so they can afford the higher prices. That inflation is good. Why do you think the, the Fed have been spending the last decade trying to create inflation? Well, now they've overshot to the upside. But not, again, they get, they get too much blame. They deserve a lot of blame, don't get me wrong. But this whole thing with Russia, uh, uh, number one, it was the pandemic, the supply chain issues there. And so supply issues, uh, not demand issues, they can only control demand. And then of course, the thing with Russia and the sanctions uh, had nothing to do with the Fed. So they don't deserve as much blame as they're getting, but they do, do deserve some. The, the point of the, the fact of the matter is it's supply driven, okay? It's because so prices are going up because there's not enough uh, so, uh, soybean and wheat and, and corn coming out of Ukraine or not enough oil and gas coming out of Russia, okay? Uh, people still have to buy that. They still have to feed their families. They still have to heat, heat and air condition their homes. They still have to drive their, their kids to school or to camp or to just to go to the grocery store. They need these things. What are they going to do? They're going to cut back on other things. It's stagflation. It only happens under supply-driven inflation. This is exactly what happened in the 1970s. That's why it's different. Okay, That's why everybody's comparing it to the 1970s. It's not just because oil prices are up a lot. It was because the oil prices were up in the 1970s because of supply issues. OPEC, OPEC had what they had was a big oil embargo. They shut down how much oil they were giving to the world. So oil prices went up. People still had to had to buy it because it was even more central back then than it is today, and and it gave them less money to to uh, to spend on other things. And uh, we're we're seeing it now. We had some pent up demand from the winter. That's been spent. People said, "I don't care how much it costs. I'm going on vacation this spring. I'm going to buy. I'm going to a house uh, on Cape Cod or wherever it may be in uh, in the summer." 
And now they're like, okay, suddenly it's like, okay, inflation is really having an impact. And the bookings uh, for kayak.com are way down. The uh, bookings, uh, reservations on open table are way down. Uh, it's just starting to roll over. The pent up demand has been spent and people that savings rate, as, as Mr. Dudley highlighted, the savings rate in, in March of 2021 was 26%, now it's 4%. Okay, people, the credit card uh, 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 things are going, the credit card balances are going up because people can't afford to pay off their balances anymore. This is, uh, so they're gonna have to spend less. So now we're into the part where the market, and people say, well, we've gone through a recession, we've already priced it in. No, we haven't. All we've repriced in was the froth that the, the, the Fed had added to the, to the, because uh, the, the Fed did the right thing initially because they saved the system. They went too long. We've gotten the froth out. And now we've got to get, uh, we've got to also uh, revalue the market uh, for a recession. And uh, so that's why uh, we're going to be going. I don't, I hate to be, a, a, you know, so negative um, and it won't happen in a straight line. But this is the right thing. This is actually the, the Fed is doing the right thing. We do need to get inflation down because it will be a worse recession if they don't if they don't do it. But the point of the, of the matter is it's normal and healthy. Bear markets are normal. Recessions are normal. And for those of us who are able to trade and make money during this decline, we're going to be the ones that will be able to take advantage of it. Where the people, I mean, from 2009 to 2012, money as a market start, shot up. Individuals were pulling money out of their mutual funds left and right because they're like, finally, I got a, I made a little bit of money back. I'm getting out. And it just kept going up and up and up and they finally got back in. OK, because they had no confidence in the market anymore. OK, now those who those of us who are making money right now are going to have that confidence, not only making money on the way down, but we're going to have the confidence to get into the market and stay with it. Uh, once it starts to rally, we'll know that the baby's been thrown out with the bathwater. We'll see how cheap it is. We won't be saying, I'll never buy another stock again. And when we buy a stock at $10 and then we, and then it goes to 20 and we buy more, we're not going to be, we're not going to be disappointed because it's like, Hey, great. I got a stock that's trading out. I bought some at 10. I bought another half at 20. My average price is 15. And guess what? It's trading at 20. I've already got a winning trade. And so worst case scenario is I'll put a stop at 16, guarantee myself a $1, uh, $1 uh, profit. That's the worst I can do. And as the stock keeps going higher, you raise your, your stop out price. But that gives you the confidence. It doesn't give you much confidence when you buy it at, at 20 and then buy more at 10. Okay, that's great. And I, bought, I bought half at 10, 20, half at 10. My average price is 15 and it's still trading at 10. I still lost 50%. Now I'm just, now I'm just relying on hope. Now I'm just relying on hope to take the market back. Hope, hope is not, you know, investment strategy. Uh, it's not just on the commercials. It's something I've been saying for a long time. And believe me, they were saying it a lot long before I ever got into this business. Uh, and I got in 40 years ago. So that's an old saying, but it's true. Hope is not an investment strategy. And so uh, these are the types of things that we're trying to help out uh, to get people to uh, uh, help people, uh, not just weather the storm. We want to do much more than just weather the storm. We want to be able to um, thrive, profit, uh, and then when the baby's thrown out with the bathwater, the market's trading at 14 times earnings or less, uh, we can step in and, and, and really get the, uh, uh, and, and really get those unbelievable deals that made Warren Buffett a billionaire. I'm not saying you're going to be a billionaire or even a millionaire, um, but you're going to, you know, uh, using, uh, being, you know, being an active trader with one who has the tools to be an act and a successful active trader, um, the, Excuse me. The uh, it gives us a great, uh, a great, great opportunity. Really, an opportunity of a lifetime. I just funny. I, I lost my train of thought there because I looked down and said that uh, Deutsche Bank is looks back to the 1780s for parallels in the U.S. bond route. I'm going to have to read that article. 1780s. I, I, I'm very much a, a market historian, but I'm not, uh, I, I'm not up to on my 1780s bond market. So I'll have to check that out. Um, but again, these, 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 these are. We're, we're, not, we're in a situation now we have unbelievable opportunities uh, for those who are willing to take it. Now, I, and like I said, uh, it's going to be tough. There, it's a risk uh, trading options and, and like we do in the chat room. It's not all options. We definitely do trade stocks. Um, but I'll, I'll give you an idea. I'll give you an, a, 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 an example on the stock in just a second. Um, but you know, one of the things that, that uh, you know, it's just that these people, um, so many people on Wall Street, they're paid to be bullish, and that's their job. I mean, I was one time I was contacted by a very big money manager in New York, be it, it's one of their strategists, and we just had the initial phone interview. And the, and the, and the guy flat out said, Well, you don't really, your job really won't be a, a, 
strategist coming up with ideas to make sure when the markets go down, there's challenging times that you, that we can convince them to stay in the market. And I'm like, what? Uh, you know, it's like, don't you have money market funds? We can tell them to, we can move them into cash. I don't know if they move into cash, they're more likely to take the, pull their money out. You know, I, you know, I understand if you're selling Toyotas, so you, the, your boss doesn't want you uh, talking great about uh, the Fords uh, or Porsches, right? Um, so, uh, I, I guess that, and that's okay because markets do go up over time. Uh, and, and so it's okay. They're not, it's not like complete scumbags, but the point is I, I just said, I, I, it's not what I, that's not what I do. And military tayback allows me to be as bullish as I want to be, or as bullish as I see, or as bearish as I right. see. And, and uh, that's really been able to help me uh, uh, do it. But the other thing I just, when we talk about individual stocks, here's one that, uh, that, that you know, just remember. Uh, really, so really quick here, Matt, before we do get into that, just want to give, a, uh, a big shout out here to <clears throat> our newest member here. Let's get the, this is going to be SBB183. Welcome to the family. Let's go. Great to have you here. Congratulations. And, uh, I, you know, I, you know the, it's going to be interesting what happens tomorrow. You know something, before I go on, I was going to talk about Intel a little bit, but that's different. Let's, let's talk about what, what's going to happen in the next day and what we've done uh, in, in, in the chat room. What we did, what we did today, okay? Um, I'll look at the QQQ because that's what we're. We've been concentrating when we do the ETFs. We look at the SPYs. We've been involved in those. I haven't done as much in, in the Russell 2000, the IWM, but they're very, very liquid. And when the time is right, we will definitely get more involved in those. But obviously, the technology stocks have the most uh, uh, have the most uh, excuse me volatility right now, and so that's where you get the biggest profits, and that's what we've been concentrating on. But here is what, uh, what, what been happening. You see, obviously, this is the QQQ. That is the NASDAQ 100. The NASDAQ composite has, what, I don't know, several thousand, two or 3,000 stocks in it. The NASDAQ 100 has the, has the 100 biggest. And, of course, that has the Apples and the Microsofts and the, and the uh, Googles, et cetera. Um, and so it's very heavily uh, weighted towards the, uh, uh, towards the technology era. And so that's why we've been trading it. And you can see, let me get rid of some of these lines here. These are just moving averages. The purple lines are 200 day, green lines are 100 day, the yellow lines are 50 day moving average. But um, let's just take out two of them. So I have to deal with that. Okay. okay. Now, so you can see it's been, you know, technical analysis, low, higher, uh, higher, low, lower, I'm sorry, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Oh, it looks like we're going to make a lower high, a higher high. That didn't make it. Came back down, lower low, lower high, Lower low. What are we going to do next? Now, I don't think we're going to rally back for the, some of the reasons I just talked about. Um, what's going on in, in the economy in the recession? But let's just look at the, at the last couple of days. Um, and you know, we uh, okay, let me just put it up here for you. So this is how what happened today. But I'm going to go back the last five days. Okay. So here are the market you can see starting late last week on the very end um, on third, I'm sorry, on Thursday of last week, you can see how the market uh, market started rallying, you know, you know, didn't get back anywhere near as besides, but it, it started rallying back at the end of the day. The next day it rallied very strongly. That was Friday. Pull back a little bit, rallied into the end of the day. Very nice day. Then we got another rally. So if we just look at the last three days, People, you know, get, you know, get and say, well, geez, maybe this rally can last. Oops, put it back in here a second. Maybe this rally can really last. What is wrong with this? Let me do it one more time. I'm sorry. Don't know why it's not updating. Q, Q, Q. It's only take two seconds. Equity GIP. Bang. Okay. Okay, here we go. So these are the last three days. You can see how there's those dotted lines kind of separated. So but that was last, uh, that was Friday, yesterday, and today. Nice rally here, but look what happened today. We had a nice rally, you know, market opened a little bit lower, but then we rallied back and everybody's kind of saying, yep, yep, we're, this, we're, we're in a short squeeze. This market's going to rally a lot more. Even the bears were saying, oh my gosh, this is, you know, it, we, we can, and, and maybe we can, but but we changed our tune, or I changed my tune anyway. I changed mine anyway. And this is today. It rallied up and then it faded. It looked like it was going to rally again. 
And the late day, sure enough, at the end of the day, it faded and faded badly. So later, the desire, when we got in here, what I did, see what I see what we saw here? Um, again, I like to go through the reasoning. I didn't just say, you know, geez, I think the market's going down. Okay, great. Well, that's, well why do you think it's going down? Well, it's losing steam here. You know, I, as you know, and you can tell, I'm bearish on the market on a longer term basis. I'm not totally sure what's going to happen over the very, very uh, sometimes I have a very strong conviction on the very short term. Right now, I'm, 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 I'm going back and forth, leaning towards that after this sh short term rally, that it, it, it will, uh, that it will roll back over. But I didn't have strong conviction. But what gave me more conviction was a key lower low. Remember, see, see how the market came down? It bounced off that level right near 181, one, I'm sorry, 282, bounced it off again, looked like it was going to rally back. Bounced off it again, bounced off it again, four times, even a fifth time if you count that. When it finally broke it, I said, okay, this is really failing. It's not going to make it. Let's buy some more bearish bets. So we bought some Q, SQQQ calls. So again, we're buying calls because it's an inverse bet. So it's an inverse bet. I'm sorry, uh, the SQQQ is an inverse ETF. So buying calls in it, we're expecting it to go up because the SQQQ will go up if the market goes down. And so, and sure enough, it broke that level. And look how it fell out of bed. That's again, through technical analysis, you can also see that this would be a head and shoulders pattern. There's the left shoulder, there's the head, there's the right shoulder. That's the neckline. We broke below it and the market got hit. Now, this is only one day. It's not a major move. We're gonna have to see more downside. We went ahead and we bought, and let's look at the other way. Remember the SQQ, it goes up if the market goes down. So I'm gonna put you right, again, I really, like to stress education and, and, and say why we're doing things. Oops, I, I meant to put the daily chart. Here we go. And it's the same thing. We have, uh, uh, so, so again, just the opposite. See, it got up to here and it looked like it was going, then, then it was, uh, um, okay, let me just draw here. And then we had a, we call it a reverse or an inverse uh, head and shoulders pattern. Bang. Right here, see that? This is the left shoulder, that's the head, that's the right shoulder, and it, it broke out, off it goes. Okay, and it made a nice little higher high above here. I really thought it might go, but we just ran out of time. So I'm hoping, or thinking, not just hoping, thinking it will go higher. So what we did, that's what we did. Again, we try to do things in a good risk management way. We bought some nice, uh, 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 think calls on the SQQQ. Remember, that goes up if the market goes down. So these, so we, we've already had a nice profit in these. But at the very end of the day, I spent a little bit of money to buy uh, the the puts, basically, and basically a very small bet that uh, that they'll go down. I don't think that's going to happen. But so, well, then why would you buy buy the you know the other side of the trade? And again, it's a much smaller trade. You know, when you when you buy a strangle or a straddle, you buy an equal amount of, of the puts and the calls, and, you, and you're, just, you're just betting that you'll see a big move the next day, and you'll make a lot more money on, on one than, you, than you'll lose on the other. In this case, I'd like to do it a little bit differently sometimes, where I, uh, where I do have a con conviction, but not a real strong conviction. So what I'm saying here is that, okay, I bought some, if the market rallies tomorrow and the SQQ goes down, I'll have protection. I will cover everything I lost on my bearish bet. Okay, I won't make any money, but at least I will cover it. I'll come out zero, okay? I'll come out flat. If, however, the market does go down, and the S, which means the SQQ will rally strongly, I'll make a lot of money on that to the upside. So sometimes you say, well, I want to make money just a little bit either way, but I'm, I'm sitting there going, I want to make a lot if I'm right, and I want to lose very little or nothing if I'm wrong. And uh, when you get in the second half of a week, it's a little bit easier to do that when you get to the second half of a week because the options aren't as expensive. Um, but, uh, the, but the point is that uh, um, we, we try to use risk management where we're not always just making one big bet for one big move going in, in one direction or another uh, in, in this way uh, when you have a hedge on. Now, of course, it, could not, it might not work. What happens if the market does nothing tomorrow? Uh, you, know, you know, believe me. If we're in the, the, the two or three days after uh, the 4th of July, uh, you're not going to be wanting to do big, you're not going to be making big uh, 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 bets on both sides, straddles or strangles, because there's a good chance the market will do nothing because it's a, it's a, it'll be a vacation week in front of earnings season. You know, 
that's a perfect reason for people to sit on their hands. But this week, I just still think there's a lot of volatility in the market. Quarter end is coming up a week from tomorrow. Uh, so this thing could work out really well. So that's what we uh, try to do. Again, it's not just oh, well, betting here, betting there, geez, geez, we'll hope that the FXI goes up 15,000%. No, we're trying to make intelligent decisions, not guesses, and uh, re tell you why we do it so you can make your own decisions and ask me about, hey, Matt, you haven't focused on this at all. Uh, I mean, Home Depot is one we've made a lot of money and I haven't looked at that stock in two weeks and I should. I just thought about it right now. But somebody might call up and uh, in the chat room and say, hey, Matt, look at Home Depot. It's really moving. Um, uh, so, so, no, maybe say, hey, it's getting oversold. Do you think it could bounce? And right now, I'd say, well, it's not as oversold as it was here or here. So I'm going to hold off for now. But we'll see. But the point is, if, if you're learning from me and other people in the chat room, uh, which have been, people have been very, very helpful uh, to each other, and, uh, and then you start getting your own ideas. And then you're like saying, OK. Uh, I'm trading on Matt's ideas or I'm trading on these other people's ideas. I'm going to come up with my own ideas. But before I do that, I'm going to do pay, I'm going to do regular trades with the stuff that I'm following on the chat room, but I'm going to do paper trades on my own ideas. And I'm going to ask the chat room, what do you think of this? And if they like it or don't like it, they'll tell me why. And we're not rude, but we're honest. And it's like, you know, I really, I'm not trying to be a jerk here. I just think that's a bad trade for this reason. Um, and, uh, and or, or I think, you know, you ought to hold off a little bit or, you know, you're too late, whatever it might be. But that's how you learn. And then you get into then you start. You know, then all of a sudden you say, hey, well, that's a great idea. Uh, let's all get in it. You know, and, and again, we're not so big that we're going to. You know, uh, uh, that's a great thing, too. We're not this huge chat room with 20,000, 10,000, 1,000 people, anything uh, where uh, you don't know who the heck's in it. And they got some some guy at a hedge fund just you know, pretending to be a. Uh, uh, a, a stupid, you know, a, a, a neophyte trader doesn't know what he's doing, he or she's doing, and then they, and they're actually what they're really trying to do is pump up a stock so they can, so they can dump it uh, in, the, you know, dump their own holdings. We don't do that. Like I said, every trade I do, you do, you know about it when I do it, not, not. I mean, sometimes you even know it beforehand. I say, hey, I'm really liking this, but it's a little too early for me. I'm gonna, you know, I may wait till tomorrow. I may wait for a few hours. I may wait for it to get a little bit more oversold, or I, I'm looking for it to break this, break above or below this level. But I do try to set it up so uh, you, you you have a reasoning uh, behind it. Don't always do that. Sometimes it's something just, you know, I just I, I hadn't been looking at it. All of a sudden, you know, usually what happens, I see something, I go, ooh, this is getting close, and I'll tell people about it. Sometimes I'll pull it up, and I'm like, oh my god. This thing's about to break out, or this thing's about to break down, and I'll immediately go, "Hey, I'm doing this trade right now, just out of the blue." Uh, so we do have some of those, but usually I try to let people know why I'm, well, when I'm doing something, and, and before I do it, and and, and why. Um, but uh, and you'll look at this here at Home Depot. This this was just as what we I, I pulled this up. Um, what I'll be looking for, um, you know, and we may see at the time when it gets completely washed out, and I want to buy it because it is getting oversold here on its RSI chart. But one thing is we do do. If we buy it down here, especially if we just buy the stock, look how the 50-day moving average it provided resistance there, got close to it and came back, got right up to it, came back, got slightly above it, came, came back, slightly above it, slightly above it, but never could break out. That's important to note. Whenever you break above a resistance level or below a support level, it always has to be more than just a tiny break because those are there's head fakes all over the place. You need, so once we get a, a, a substantial and meaningful break above that 50 day moving average, this stock is gonna run. All that momentum money is gonna come flying into that stock. And so that's just keep that in the back of your mind. Now that's still $30 from where it's trading right now. So it's still got ways to go, uh, more than 10%. Um, but it doesn't mean we won't buy it here if it gets extremely oversold. I guess my point is, so I don't mind adding to it. Uh, you know, it's like, well, oh, geez, so that, that's a problem. It's like, if you have a really good idea and it keeps starting to run, Oh, I wish I had bought more. It's too. It's it's gone too high. I'm just going to stay with what I have. I'm not going to add any more. I'm like, no, I'm adding right here. This thing's going a lot higher. Uh, so again, we try to use use a lot of that educational stuff, whether it be in the chat room or in of course uh, when we're talking on the uh, on the uh, on, on our Tuesday call. Right now, the Tuesday call is at 11:30. Uh, yesterday it ran for about an hour. Uh, we started doing it. We thought it would be 20 minutes to a half an hour, but it just uh, uh, people seem to really enjoy it. So we, we extended it. And uh, it used to be that, that literally the, we had a Zoom window was only open for half an hour. Now we, we kind of be, uh, uh, leave it on as long as we can. I mean, I, people, I, I try to stop it before an hour. I used to try to go not much more than 45 minutes. But it's people just after a while, they just get uh, it gets bored. They got other things to do. Um, but we're talking about maybe trying to move it to earlier in the day, even before the opening. But we'll see. We did that last Tuesday because uh, I had some personal things to, to do um, and I wasn't going to be in most of the day. 
and uh, people seem to like it. So we'll see what we'll, we'll, we're playing with that right now. Um, but uh, anyway, so I, I, I think that pretty much covers most of the stuff I wanted. Uh, I wanted to, you know, to give you an idea. Excuse me of what we do and how we do it, um, and uh, uh, what we we um, you know we can get some one thing we like to do before we uh, wrap things up is is to go over. Uh, I'll go over some stocks that I think are going to be important right now. Um, and uh, and then you know get some things from you and go into Rodrigo. He'll come back on in a little while, and we'll and he'll, he'll give you can throw some symbols into him, and I can we can look at the charts on those, and uh, we can talk about their fundamentals and talk about their uh, uh, their stocks. And that's another thing too is sometimes there'd be an idea, and I'd be like, you know, I'm just neutral on this thing. I I don't I don't like it. I don't I don't not like it. I don't like it. I don't it's just neutral right. right now, and I don't see a big play right here. So I'll say that, and, and I'm just honest with people. If I don't like the trade, I'll tell them. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. I'm not again. Not, not nothing personal. And if it's if it's uh, if it's a neutral thing, I say you know you got to wait. There's just it, it, it stocks have been in a sideways range, and it's going to stay until it breaks out of that range. We really don't know where it's going to go. So you get again my, my point is honesty because like, like I said, I'm not going to get any money out of it if you if you uh, uh, if you decide to trade it, um, whether you trade it now or ten, I'm not going to make any money off it anyway. So I, I don't care when you trade it. So I try to be very honest, and and, uh, and that that works out. Uh, um, uh, really well. I mean, before, uh, you know, and, and as I said, and Rodrigo, I don't know if you're going to get some uh, tickers in there, but I, there are some things I want to go over, especially in the energy area. Uh, the oil stocks, now, one of the reasons it's funny, I became very, very cautious on the energy stocks, even though I was wildly bullish two years, almost two years ago. And along the way, I pulled back and got a little bit more, uh, a little less uh, bullish. Okay, hold on a second. And then last week, you know, and it was literally about a week ago, I said, we, we remember I showed you, I showed you the XLE. We made over 100% on our XLE puts on that negative bet, even though I'm wildly bullish in, my, in the, in the uh, stock picks uh, act, act, activity and the, the, the tier one and tier two uh, stock picks report that I do. Uh, I've got all sorts of energy stocks in there that I love. And we, we've bought in there, we, we bought them two, you know, a year and a half ago. So there's, even though they've come down, they're still way up. Um, but a couple of times I said, hey, let's go in and make some negative bets. Let's trade around these positions so we can maximize our, our profits. Now, what happened at the end of last, at, at the end of last week, I was th- or beginning of this week, I should say, God, so I was like, geez, these stocks are really way down. Maybe we should start nibbling on them. But I was looking at a few things and then I noticed, whoops, see here, and I'll blow it up a little bit. This is the weekly chart on oil. And you see last week, let's get rid of some of these things. Get rid of volume. Sorry. Okay. See what happened last week. Here's the, the chart of last week, the bar chart of last week. Okay. It made a higher high. See, it got slightly higher high than the previous week. It may, certainly made a lower low than the previous week. And it closed below the pro- previous week's low. That's called an outside down week. And that happens a lot less than you might think. You might think it happens all the time. It doesn't. And you look at these, it doesn't, just doesn't happen very often. And that usually is a sign of exhaustion. That the that the short it's a short term call, but it just shows that people are buying, 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 and finally, so it goes up to a new high, and like oh, I can't have it, and it, and it goes back down, makes a new low, and stays down. And that's what we call an outside week. So um, on Tuesday, Monday, the market was closed. Tuesday, I said, yeah, a lot of these stocks are a lot more attractive than they were in the energy sector, but I want to hold off. It looks like oil wants to go down some more. Well, sure enough, it went down yesterday. Went uh, I'm sorry, it went down yesterday. This is the this week. Let's go back to the daily chart. Uh, hold on. And I just said, there we go, good. So you can see it got really crushed. Thank goodness we didn't buy them yesterday. They got crushed today uh, and oil went all the way down to 101. Looks like it probably wants to break below 100 before it bounces back. But there are a lot of stocks that we're gonna be looking at. And, oops, hold on. Uh, you know, one of, my fa- one of my favorite ones is uh, Devon Energy, okay? Look how much the stock has come down. Okay, you can see its RSI is very oversold. Okay, and so it's really looking looking good. Now remember, I talked earlier about a thing called the Bollinger Bands, and what that is. And again, we again, hopefully for some people they know what it is. If they don't, but we try to you know teach, be teach, thoughtful. I don't get some of these technicians get get way too into the uh, uh, to try to make things sound a lot more complicated than they need to be. Uh, their technical analysis is 
is, is just not it's not as, as difficult as, as, as people some people try to portray it because they're like hey i i, I it's it's what it's a, solely what they do and and don't get me wrong that many of them are very very good very very good um but uh uh you know some of the stuff but is is but again we still want to keep with some basics i don't need five that i mean believe me i talk about descending triangles wedges uh uh head and shoulders patterns um whatever and look at of course moving averages trend lines etc but we don't get too crazy because it just sometimes it, it, it starts to use too much it's, it hurts you know you get hurt but here's what's called the bollinger bands chart this middle line this gray line uh that is the 20 day moving average not the 20 not the 200 the 20. and these lines the purple line is two standard deviations above that 20 day moving average and the green line or this yellow yellowish green line is uh the two standard deviations below it well devon energy is getting below that again Okay, it's two days. Look how every time it got below it for like here, two out of four days, it rallied strongly. Okay, it got below it here for two days, rallied strongly. Now this has been two out of three days, so it's getting close. I'm, I'm gonna, I mean, we'll think about pulling the trigger on that one. I still wonder, um, but you know, I told the people in the chat room, it's okay to buy a little bit here of the stock, but I don't wanna make the big bet on the, in the, in the, uh, uh, in the uh, energy, I'm sorry, in the energy names quite yet. Uh, Oops, yeah, let's go. Oops, I blew it. This is just, it's called, it's, it, it used to be called Apache. I always call it Apache and people have to remind me that the name is now APA Corp. But it's uh, APA, you can see, getting oversold. Okay, great company, great management team. I'm a little worried though, because you see how, okay, let's break that here. Some of these lines. And then I'm not concerned about a long-term basis. I love the stock, love the company. Uh, Great fun, uh, fundamentals. However, you see how the 100 day, this is a green line, the 100 day moving average, got down to it, bounced off it, okay? Got close to it, bounced, got close to it, bounced, got right down to it, bounced. This time it's broken below it. That's a little bit of a concern. However, you see it's RSI, relative strength index, is getting oversold. It's not as oversold as it was here or here. So I do wanna, again, another reason why I don't wanna step to the plate too much, my thinking now is that it may get down here towards the uh, the May lows. It's going to be down. Uh, let's see here. That'll be yeah, down near 36. It gets down there. Then I'm then it's going to be more oversold, and it's going to be testing this low. I don't think it's going to make a lower low because I'm just too bullish on the energy sector. All this talk about uh, the economy slowing down that, that that's fine, but it, again, it's a supply issue. We do not have enough capacity. You don't have enough capacity to refine crude oil uh, uh, into gasoline. There's there's still too much oil. Okay, even if demand uh, falls considerably, especially especially uh, if the war the war of attrition, which is now a war of attrition in Ukraine, continues, which it does look like it's going to do. Uh, if that war ends and they get a, you know ceasefire and they start opening that up, I'll have to change immediately. Um, but it's not just the war in Ukraine. It's also the underinvestment uh, in the fossil fuel industry and in the uh, uh, new, 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 and believe me, we all want to go clean energy, but we, it's, we cannot, it is impossible for us to get there uh, quickly. It's going to take two decades. And even if it takes one decade, we can't, we have to still uh, take, you know, rely on fossil fuels. And therefore, uh, we'll, I'm going to want to take advantage of those stocks that, that do well, especially since most of them are, are, are <laughs> transitioning their businesses to be uh, more fossil fuel friendly. And uh, so it's still a good way. But again, I want to get a little bit more oversold. That's one of the reasons why I, uh, I mean, again, I mean, that is also the reason why I don't think it'll break to it. Remember I talked about how high, here we go. Higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, all the way, all the way, all the way up. Oops. Okay. Higher, high. We haven't made a lower low yet. If we make a lower low, then I'm really gonna have to reassess things. But again, because of my fundamental uh, stance on the group, um, I do think it, uh, it will hold that level, but this is one we're keeping in mind. So again, these are the types of things that we try to talk about beforehand so people can set up and they go, well, I don't know. You know, I've got a friend who lives down in Texas. His, his, uh, his uh, brother is, uh, it works for uh, Exxon or Chevron or maybe Apache or what, APA Corp. Um, I'm going to call him up and says, well, you see what he says. And they, you know, and it's like, yeah, he, he loves it. Or, or he might say, you know, it's not a good one. I was like, you know, you ought to look at uh, 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 Conoco instead. Fine. But you can, you, the point is you're learning. You, you learn all these things, hopefully picking up a, a few things from my 40 years of experience in the business. So, um, 
so that's, again, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the energy sector. That's one that we want to step back into in a big way. I'm just not quite there yet uh, because some of these technical reasons. Um, but, uh, and, you know, the guy from Goldman Sachs, ahead head of uh, um, commodities uh, there, uh, this commodities researcher, I think he's head of the whole commodity department. Uh, but he was again on today saying that uh, uh, oil prices are still headed higher and he's been spot on, spot on. Uh, for or at least a year now. So, uh, and, and as have others who have been bullish, as have we have been bullish. But uh, again, nothing moves in a straight line. Right. This one's going to hit hard, it's preventing a great opportunity. And we'll be getting into these names in the next, in the, in the coming weeks. Okay, good stuff there, uh, Matt. So then the next one we have here is for uh, Revlon, but not for the options, just for the stock. Yeah, all right. Well, Okay, now, again, we talked about a little bit earlier about how the, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, it's just a very, very risky play. Now, let's see, now, stock up to almost $10. Now, it's down, so it's down 20% from its highs. So that if we get more talk about this, I mean, look how much more overbought it got. It's getting to an overbought level, but this is not going to be a technical play. This is going to be a news play. And if this thing falls through, this stock is going to fall like a stone. And again, if they're declaring bankruptcy, I mean, I just can't imagine it's going to get much more than $10. So if you're buying it on, on, on again, it's getting overbought. Um, it can't get more overbought, but you want to have very, very tight stops uh, if you want to buy this stock here. Let me, rid of, let me get rid of these. Uh, that's the 200-day moving average, that purple line. Um, okay. That purple line, you know, and... You know, I, that's not really a, a key level. But you can see it's getting overbought. If anything, I'd be wanting to make uh, a negative bet. I just don't, you know, Revlon's a great, a great name. I mean, it's an iconic thing. And, and, and boy, if you want to know the history of how that they got taken over, it's a, it's really a sad story, but they got over leveraged. And uh, so if somebody can turn it around, I don't know anything about this guy in India that who's uh, supposedly making the play. Uh, so I, I just can't talk to it on a fundamental basis. On a technical basis though, it's getting quite extreme. If anything, I'd probably be betting on the on the downside. Um, uh, but uh, I guess, and, and the other point is, if you do bet for a further rally get, to get back to ten and maybe a little bit higher than ten, you want to take profits. I think then uh, I just don't see again. I don't know. I don't. We don't cover the account. Uh, the, the account. We don't cover the stock. I can't talk to the fundamentals. But the, you know, suddenly the stock goes from from uh, uh, going into bankruptcy to being you know, traded for you know. Back up at highs from November. I just don't see that happening. I, uh, let's look at let's look what uh, happened with uh, uh, Elon Musk when he overpaid, overbid for uh, Twitter. Now he's scrambling to get out of the trade. So I don't think this guy's been paying up in a big way. So I I don't want to be too aggressive here. If anything, I'd buy a lottery ticket on that it goes back down, and uh, and and you have to base it. Let's look, you know just on the stock overall. I, if you if you own it, I I wouldn't you know you'd seriously think about taking profits up here. All right, and then we have uh, Meta, Facebook. Yeah, um, boy, this, uh, I just can't seem to get out of their own way. However, the, the um, you know, it, it's, it's part of this has been very political. I, and, and I, 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 the big thing for me is I think, you know, let's look at it here, hold on. Trade. Okay. It's trading at 13 times earnings. Okay, so it's well below a market multiple. See, this is the latest PE. This is PE versus estimates. It's a PE on a trailing basis is 11 times earnings, 13 times earnings. So this is going to be a cheap stock. The stock, I, I think this is one where, uh, uh, Zucker, I'm sorry, remember his name for a second. Zuckerberg basically said, we have negative, it's, it's an election year. We, we got to get the target off our backs or off our chests. So people aren't shooting at us. So the people don't sit there and say, let's go try to restrict them. Uh, we're having a problem anyway. Let's just not say when Lockheed was purposely made things worse. But what he did do, he said, we got these problems. Let's make the changes we need to make. This is the perfect time to do it. Let's throw the kitchen sink at them to say, this is everything. We'll do everything we need to do to turn into turn us back into the real winner that I think they're going to be. 13 times earnings is a cheap stock. Let's go back to the chart. This is one, but again, it's, it's also a, a, a market stock. So if the stock market, a market stock, 
In other words, it moves with the market. Uh, if it uh, if the market goes lower, the stock will go lower as well. So I think it's got some more downside. But since it's come down so much, and since it's so inexpensive, it's not going to fall anywhere near as, as some others. And uh, and so I think this is one where you want to be buying a little bit here, buy a little bit next month, buy a little bit in August, September, and you buy it a little bit. And so you have a you say I'm, let's say I'm going to put X amount of dollars into this into this. Uh, let's just say a hundred dollars. Hopefully for other people, it's more than $100, but just to make a nice round number. So I'm going to put in $15 or 10, I'm going to put $10 into this stock every month. Uh, and my average price, dollar cost averaging is going to look great because when we come out of this bull market, I don't know, I can't catch the exact bottom. Uh, when we come out of this bear market, this bull market, this stock is going to take off and I'm going to have a nice position with a nice average price. But what you do too, too what you do then as well, as you say, okay, I'm going to take a little extra money that I said I was going to spend hundred dollars. Now I'm going to, when the market really looks like it's it's finally bottomed, the stock is finally bottomed, it's really dirt cheap. And then you sit there and go, okay, remember that money I made uh, trailing in the trading in the chat room? Well, now I've got some extra money. Now I'm going to not only I'm now I'm going to make a big bet. I'm not just going to buy it once every month with a nice average price. This thing's flat on its back. I'm going to buy the money. I'm going to, I'm going to go in here and put in another full hundred dollars. I'm going to double my bet, uh, and suddenly got a nice price, and off the thing goes, and it rallies for ten years. It'd be like buying stocks in 2009 all over again, or in 2003 all over again. So that's my opinion here. But you can see the problem is even after the big sell-off after the earnings earlier this year, where they threw the kitchen sink and everything. Okay, lower high, lower low, lower high. Not a lower low, but a lower high, followed by another lower low. It's, it's, it's just one that I think you should definitely nibble on right now. And the other thing though, too, is that look how that 50 day moving average has provided resistance. It did get above it for two days here, but really, you know, came right back down. One of these days it's gonna break above that 200 and then it's just gonna shoot to the moon. The problem is it, it, I think it's probably gonna happen from a lower level. So I'm not backing up the truck now, but I do like Meta uh, because unlike, uh, even though a lot of other stocks are down a, a lot, they're not as down as much as Meta, more importantly, uh, they're not as cheap as Meta, and therefore um, uh, they will still fall. They still have further to fall, even a stock like Apple Computer, which is a great, great company. I'm not, the difference between a, a stock and a company, a company can be a great company with a, and be a lousy stock because it's gotten way too expensive. Uh, but, but again, it will only come down and it'll, it won't go out. Enough. And then you know, it can be a lousy a company, but the stock, but it's a still viable company and the stock gets thrown out with the bathwater and it still is, is a great stock, even though the company's not that great. In this case, uh, Apple Computer, um, good stock, great company, good stock. I think it'll, it'll become a cheap stock, but uh, this one's already becoming cheap. So I like, uh, I like Meta down here, but not in an aggressive way. Not yet, because I'm just too bearish on the overall market. Right, <clears throat> right. Interesting stuff there. A uh, big shout out there to our newest family member, Alp. Welcome to the family, Alp. Let's go. Great. Great to have you here, Alp. Looking forward to it. And like I said, tomorrow's going to be a very interesting day. We have some negative bets on uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. Of course, we have uh, uh, the Jerome Powell uh, meeting. I'm sorry, speaking in front of Congress again tomorrow. Don't expect anything big there because he spent all he spent several hours today doing it. It's always a semi-annual uh Testimony is always two days. Uh, one, you know, and, and he rotates it each time. He goes one day at the House and one day at the Senate. And then the next time he goes first day at the Senate, first day at the House. And then he goes, rotates back and forth. The thing is, the second day is pretty much a regurgitation of the first day. Second day isn't as important. They don't follow it unless something, unless he says something really new, uh, which is, it'd be surprising if that happens. Uh, but uh, again, uh, there's a lot of things going on in the world. Like I said, Taiwan Straits. Uh, Inflation in, in, in the UK, what's going on, uh, of course, in Ukraine. Um, uh, I, I, we'll, 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 you know, Thursday's one, I guess a lot of these, <clears throat> I, I don't know if that really affect the market, but the, uh, the Supreme Court's coming out with some more decisions. Um, so we got other things going on, the market can really move. Um, but uh, anyway, so uh, some other ones here, you want to, I, I know everybody likes Tesla. So before I get Rodrigo in here. Yeah, uh, Tesla and Bitcoin. Yeah, oh God. Okay. Yeah, you haven't even you haven't even covered Bitcoin at all. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, how's that possible? Talk about yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, now Tesla. Whoops. Now, okay, Tesla does not trade for eighty three cents. So, I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, needless to say, I had the wrong stock. I put T L S A instead of T S L A. Okay, hold on. Okay, boy, would you like to have Tesla at eighty three cents? Okay. Okay, sorry about that. 
Okay, Tesla, you know, we talked about this a lot today. The thing about it just, you know, a little disappointing, what we want to see tomorrow, what I want to see tomorrow. If this thing, see it's very neutral on its RSI chart, and that's not the only thing we look at. We look at MACD charts. Let's look at the MACD chart. And then we give me a chance, a little education here to tell you what that is. MACD. It's trying to do a positive cross here. Uh, and what this does is kind of like the, uh, it's when it crosses negatively, this is the nine day and the 12 days. So it's a very short term one, but it kind of acts like the, you know, a death cross when the 50 day moving average crosses below the 200 day, they call it the death cross. And when it, when the 50 day crosses above the 200 day, they call it a golden cross and bullish. Here is just negative cross. They don't call it anything, but it's, again, it's a much shorter term. It's the nine day and the 12 day exponential moving averages. It's trying to see a positive cross here. But what I'm gonna be doing here tomorrow, if the market does well, and this thing can break back above its highs from today, which was 740, this thing is gonna make a quick run to 800, in my opinion. Um, so what I'm, I'm looking at here, I, I don't care about the moving averages, so I'm gonna get rid of those. I'm gonna get all these lines off the chart. But see how this thing really, here it got, you know, we finally you know, we had a good rally there, but then again, Lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Not even, a, I mean, barely call it a higher, uh, a lower high, a lower low. It couldn't make, I tried to make a higher high, couldn't make it. And then another string of higher lows. But now it made a higher, instead of a lower low, we've made a higher low. That gives us some potential. If this thing can break above 740, I think it's the minimum is gonna race to 800. And of course, if it breaks 800, it's, that'll give it an important higher high. It'll really run. So I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt right now. Even, but then my, of course, my concern is that I'm bearish on the, on the overall market. I just don't, and like I said earlier, I'm bearish overall. I'm not, not fully convinced what it's going to do on a very short-term basis over the rest of this week and into, you know, up between now and the end of the quarter next Thursday. I, I sometimes I frequently have a very strong opinion. Right now, I'm definitely leaning bearish, but I'm not as strong as I, as I it would be because it's just the indicators that I look at just aren't, aren't telling me which way it's going to go yet. Um, but I, 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 you know, we have to keep our mind open mind and I could, the market could, if the, if the market could rally between now and the end of the quarter uh, next Thursday, and if it does, uh, Tesla's going to at least 800, maybe even a little bit higher. Uh, you break below these lows down here and we got a big problem, but uh, I'll be watching it very closely tomorrow because I, I want that confirmation. Um, Sometimes you don't need the confirmation because you're really confident of a call. I'm not confident enough yet in this call. And I'll just show you another thing here. See how it's, uh, you know, I, I haven't talked much about trend lines, but which we taught, we look at all the time. Okay, but let's go here. Yeah, well, that's about level one. Let's use the shorter term trend line here. This is going back, but see, it's trying to break above that kind of shorter term trend line. And let's go on the stock on a closing basis. Those are all, those include the bar charts include the intraday basis. Oops, GSLA. Okay, now, see this trend line here. Now this is just using the stock, and, and most technicians focus on the closing prices and rightfully so, but see this? See how it's trying to break above it. It is breaking above that trend line. So that's another reason I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, this thing might just go higher. Uh, even though I'm cautious on the market overall, if the overall market gets hit hard the next two days, which is possible, this thing's coming down. If it doesn't, even if the market kind of goes sideways in the next couple of days, this has the potential to move up. So, uh, and that's why I try to keep open-minded. If people get fought, it's like, I'm bearish, nothing's going up. Well, first of all, Tesla can go in a different direction of the market. Usually not when, it, when the market sees a big move, uh, but, if the but if the market moves sideways, this stock could rally. And so uh, I'm a little bit more constructive on that. Now let's go to Bitcoin. Uh, Boy, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's been such a disaster. The one, my, one, my biggest concern, as I said today in the chat room, see how it rode around that 30,000 level for a while? Now it looks like it wants to do the same thing around 20,000 before it's next leg lower. But look how oversold it got there. But when, after it got fought off that oversold condition, it just traded sideways. We could do the same thing. Sometimes you have sideways corrections. The thing is corrections can happen in both directions, right? If the trend is lower, a correction is a, is a rally. Uh, this trend is certainly lower, and but a correction can go sideways sometimes. That's what happened then and then lower. 
you know, uh, this is, you know, there are people saying this is an all time great buy. I think also you have Jeff Gunlock, a great, you know, he's a fixed income manager, but he thinks it can drop to as much as 10,000. I am bullish on cryptocurrencies on a long term basis, but the comparison that many people dry, uh, draw to the 2000, um, now the 2000, uh, the, the dot com bubble bursting is very, is very, is absolutely correct because there were, you know, the ones that survived, the internet companies that survived were un have been unbelievable. Amazon being the most obvious one. Uh, this one is going to be a, a situation where, where you know, we have 9,000 cryptocurrencies. There's only a very small handful that are going to survive. The ones that do are going to do really well. But, you know, Amazon also went down 90% before it bounced, uh, before it bottomed. I don't think that Bitcoin is going to go down 90%, but I do think it has more downside here. Uh, and the other thing is that we do, I also agree with those who say, Bitcoin is likely to survive. Ethereum, that's another one likely to survive. And a third or fourth one, or maybe something we've never even heard of yet. Um, it's out there, but it's just it's not well known yet. But we'll see. Um, but the point is, it's a uh, uh, right now. It's very oversold. But you got to see it. You got to see it break back up here. And the one thing I, I guess I'll be looking at is the MACD chart. Remember, when you get a positive MACD, oops, I turn a little bit more constructive. Okay, see what happened here? We had a positive MACD, but it just still traded sideways. So it's trying to make a positive MACD cross. If it can, that will certainly at least make it uh, a, a, an opportunity for people to go in and take a chance uh, and then use a tight stop. Um, but, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, this is a, a situation where it got pushed too high because of all the liquidity in the marketplace uh, that the Fed, Fed and other central banks provided. And uh, therefore, uh, it has more to go before it finds its, its, its fair value uh, as more liquidity and leverage gets wound out of them. Remember, the stock, one of the big reasons the stock market became so expensive is because so many people added leverage, the biggest leverage ever, margin debt to all-time highs. As that leverage is unwound, the market always overshoots. Whenever you go from a highly leveraged market to one that's not leveraged, uh, the, goes, the market goes from very expensive. It doesn't stop at fairly valued. It goes to undervalued. I don't think uh, Benzing, it's hard to value uh, Benzing, uh, Benzing, Bitcoin. It's hard to value Bitcoin or Ethereum, um, but I think they've got further to go because I think there's more leverage that needs to be unwound in the system. And uh, so that's my kind of feeling there. But if we can get this MACD cross, uh, this could be at least a place where you can you can say, hey, I'll use the 19, what was the low? I'll use the 19,500 levels by stop and I'll, I'll, I'll buy it here, use a tight stop. And if it does start to run, uh, you'll, you'll, you know, it'll show that I was wrong. And then it was able to hold 20,000. But I remember saying, when I got here to 30,000, I said, if it breaks down, it's going to drop quickly to 20,000. That's exactly what happened. This time, if it breaks, I'm, I'm, my target is 14,000, not 10,000 like Jeff Gunlock. Um, but it's going to provide an unbelievable opportunity at some point. Um, uh, you just Some people are going to lose so much money between now and then. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be hard for them. But uh, that's kind of what, that's where I, I look at it. I, again, I like it longer term. It's going to be that same thing that Amazon is, but I just don't think we're there yet. Uh, before that big bottom, before that, you know, that unbelievable bottom is, uh, uh, is in place. Interesting take there, Matt. Uh, what, um, so for the folks that are here, I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys some of the trades, the format, how does Matt pretty much how he shows it in the live trading room. Uh, for those that already joined, make sure you check your email because you have an email uh, to fill out your form to get the laptop that we're giving out. But Matt, I want to give you a big thank you for being here. All you do to help out retail traders. I know you're a busy guy. Um, anything you want to leave the folks here in the market on why they should join the chat room before I go ahead and show them uh, the chat and, and the format, all that stuff. Yeah, I just think, you know, the, the thing about the, the, the markets today, they're so um, volatile and there's so many people on Wall Street that, are, that give you the same. Uh, I get very frustrated when I, when, I, when I listen to these guys and it's just like, they keep saying, you know, it's going to be okay. And then, you know, when the market bounces a little bit, you see, I was right. You know, I, you know, don't fight the Fed. The Fed is still, and that's, remember, that's one thing, remember, the market didn't turn around the last, in the last dozen years, something big had to change and nothing has changed yet. If it does, believe me, I will tune bullish very, very quickly. But, and you go back to 2020, it's only when the market turned back up when the Fed came in and, with, and, and other central banks with a massive QE program. 2018, 20% decline or 19.9% decline. It only turned around when the Fed pivoted. They're not pivoting right now and there's no indication that they're gonna pivot. 
uh, that's you know they they and they only only pivoted when the when the fixed income markets froze up, not when the stock market, not because the stock market was down, but it needed a, a significant change by the Fed. Both those two indications, those two instances. In 2011, we had another again 19% decline in the stock market. What happened then? The ECB, the European Central Bank, bailed out Greece. Okay, why did they bail out Greece? Because they had to bail out the European banks. They weren't. They didn't care about Greece. They only know is that the all of the European banks, and all the big European banks, were loaded to the gills with Greek and Italian debt. And if uh, Greece was allowed to fail, these banks would have been in big trouble. So they came in, bailed out Greece. That created the bottom. In 2009, the Fed had been supplying liquidity to the system for months basically for over a year, say years, that wasn't enough to turn a market. What changed it was the rule when they changed the market to market, I'm sorry, mark to market. All these banks had to mark to market every night. So they said, hey, you don't have enough reserves uh, for the value of your, your portfolio. You've got to add more reserves. And the only way we can do that is sell more assets. And finally, they said, you don't have to follow that rule anymore. That day, the market bottom, okay? And uh, so it was a significant change. Until we get that significant change, we're going to have a lot of volatility. I think it's going to last for a long time. I think the Fed knows this. They're okay with it, um, as long as it doesn't happen all at once. And, uh, and they can do things behind the scenes to prevent that uh, by you know, getting the liquidity, uh, you know, stepping on the liquidity gas pedal every once in a while, to keep things more gradual, not all at once. Um, and that's going to provide great opportunities for us because we don't just want to weather the storm. We want to profit from it. The tools are there. Uh, and, you know, I have the experience that help people. We've had so much success this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think we can, it's something we'll be able to continue to do. Not every trade works. We do lose money on trades sometimes, uh, but we have a lot more winners than we have losers. Our portfolio is way up this year. Uh, and we want to be able to uh, continue to do that as long as this volatility stays with us. And then the big, the big home run is that we're going to have uh, the money and the confidence uh, to jump into some unbelievably great stocks that are dirt cheap when they throw the baby out with the bathwater. And that's the whole, that's the whole idea. And then the trading becomes even easier. Uh, then you start trading around really uh, bullish, uh, really profitable positions. And, uh, and it's even more fun. So that's it. You know, uh, good luck to everybody. Rodrigo, thanks for having me here. I enjoyed it. And, uh, uh, again, uh, we're here to help people make money, but more than anything else, uh, we're here to, to help people educate them so they can learn how to trade and, and uh, understand why they're doing what they're doing. And, uh, and not just following the, the perma bulls on Wall Street who are paid to, uh, to, to keep you in the stock market. And, and, and we're here to help you, I guess, maximize your profits. And that's, that's really what we try to do. Right. Absolutely, man. Let's go. Matt Maley, I'll see you in the chat room tomorrow, Matt. Sounds good, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. All right, definitely. So, um, uh, MD, we went over Rev already, but I, uh, I can see what you're saying. There was some lady on CNBC right now that basically said there's no more shares available to short and that it's a short squeeze. I think it was Karen Finnerman on CNBC. It just happened like five minutes ago. But yeah, I think that's what you're talking about, Rev, uh, MD. But basically, um, in the live trading room here with Matt, you can basically trade with him the whole day, Monday to Friday. You're welcome, Francisco. So you have two channels here, okay? One of the channels is Inner Circle Chat. That's where everybody can post. Matt, all the, all the members, you know, everybody gets together. And that's where you see the magic play out, right? Then you have Matt's important messages, which is below. Only Matt can post there. Why? Because we want his trades to be very easy, simple to follow. And they're already simple as it is because you have clear entries as far as, you look, timestamps, what you're buying. So for it says he's got a CNBC interview, but uh, let me show you a trade format. Here you go. For example, uh, that he's gonna buy some of the SQQQ June 24, $70 calls. So that's an example of a four of a trade. That's how he always does it, right? I'm going to add to the TQQQ calls once again, that sort of stuff. So um, it's, it's super easy to follow. If you're trading options and you're new and you're trying to get into it, you know, you don't have to do all these complicated things, um, you know, and ultimately the people that make the most money in, the, in this market in, are the traders, you know, um, and you can do that even more by just by doing this strategy, the Matt Maley strategy, if you will. Right. So the, the chat room of the schedule, the schedule of the chat room is Monday to Friday, nine to five p.m. And then you have the session on Tuesdays, which is at eleven thirty a.m. Eastern all the way. Uh, it could go up to an hour or longer, right? It, it, it depends, right? 
uh, up to you guys. You can also set up uh, sound alerts here. So if you see the bells that are yellow, that means the sound alerts are on for that particular channel. There are two channels here, remember. Inner Circle Chat and Matt's Imported Messages. So I have it all pulled up here. This is how I use it. But there's a ton of different people in the chat room, people with full-time jobs, part-time jobs that uh, make it work for them, right? All you have to do is have this window open. And that way you're always you know, aware of what's happening in the markets and how you can trade the volatility, right? You don't want to just sit on the sidelines. Um, the other thing I want to show you is that you do have some charts in the bottom, but more importantly, you have a proprietary scanner here that we made just for the chat members. So you can see here, uh, you know, some of the stocks that are pretty much like percentage wise on the gainer side and the loser side. Right. So um, everybody that joins will get a laptop. That's right, Tony. Um, big shout out. We got to have well, we got to give a big shout out here to a couple folks that join here. One second. All right, uh, welcome here. Uh, DBX, welcome to the family here. Let's go. So uh, folks, keep in mind, as soon as you join, very important, make sure that you're actually uh, checking your emails because you're also gonna get some extra stuff. Remember I told you, that's gonna be sent to you by email. So if you have questions um, about anything related to you know this chat room or anything, send it, we're gonna put out the contact in the chat, all right? But um, MD, if you want to check back a little bit, like 15 minutes ago, we covered, uh, we covered, uh, Rev and we covered a little bit earlier too, as well, but basically, I mean, you know, it's a risky play, but high risk, high reward. That's this, that's how this works. Right. Um, okay. So let me just make sure I post this. Thanks a lot guys for being here. I want to appreciate you guys. It's been a good session. Definitely. Matt Maley does this. He, he does, uh, Donald. Uh, he drops gems all the time. Like, this is who he is. He's been doing it for 40 years at the highest level that you can imagine. You know, uh, global equity strategist, head of trading at Merrill Lynch, where he managed Fidelity and BlackRock, two of the biggest accounts in the world, among many, many other, other big accounts. So it's very important to see that, right? Somebody that's experienced and well-seasoned veteran in the markets trading with you. So with that, uh, thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time. And for those that joined, we will see you in the chat room where we can trade together with Matt the whole day. So don't miss out on the session. We'll see you guys there tomorrow.